We're going to go wow. to the midday in a second here. But here's Bitcoin taking levels out and actually gapping higher um, right now. So you guys can sort of see this uh, happening here. So, you know, let's just quickly look at, you know, like a GBTC or something like that um, and see if this is getting bumped. We looked at this last time. It wasn't too happy. There it is. So there's the move up. I was gonna say, we looked at it last and wasn't too happy with the relationship, but look at it starting to go now as well. There goes GBTC and the Neil just highlighted Mara. Are you shorting this or what are we doing? This is the level that I, this was the level. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I know what I just did. Oh. I key, no, I key stroked my, you can put a stop in before it gets to a level, uh, but I put in the wrong price and it punched me out the second I had the stop in there. I was just short. Oh goodness, it, it was actually, I, it made money because I'm actually short. I was short and actually made a couple of cents there. But uh, the idea was to be short off of yesterday's closing range top. It got into that spot. There was no turnaround. It broke local high, got into the bottom consolidation there and 23 and a half looks like the top of that zone. So I want to get back into the short to that level. We talked about waiting for it to get to your resistance zone. I just shorted it with you. <laughs> this is where, this is where you have to be super patient. Previous support turning into resistance, well, look what happened when it got to yesterday's low. It pulled back into 22. When it broke the high to go into that range, this is, this is essentially, like in the aftermarket, uh, it got to about 23 and a half there. And that's the bottom range for the entire, Whoa. the afternoon show was essentially the top was 23 and a half with the bottom at 22 and a half. So that entire dollar zone is the short entry and giving it to that 50 was what I was supposed to do this morning. Now you can muck up and short it at levels that you don't want to, but that doesn't mean you don't take the short that you plan to in the morning. Should have been a long today. It was an SSR bounce play, but it never set up for me. Not the way that I trade SSR bounces. I look to scalp them. The market. But uh, the market is absolutely recovering. I don't want to say flying. We're still down 0.6%. As we go to 11 o'clock, it's 11.02. Ah. Let's get over to the midday and some Nexi with uh, Adara. Shorting <laughs> Mara is not right. Nope. Oh, we're here. Shit. You're bang on, Neil. Nexi, we're involved in that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what is up, beautiful people? Welcome to Learn How to Trade, formerly known as The Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I am Sharif. And as per usual, we're going to take a playbook, uh, a play out of the Katina Man's playbook, and we're going to do the roll call, but we're going to wait for everybody to migrate on over we already we already have Sidhi and then Callum Mitchell Miller what's up my man crazy crazy stitch lady I can't even speak today pitch bull f f t b big wampadia da trader um tra futures trader extraordinaire there we go we got the broadest wolf I like that we got KK we got no man we got big Michael Lloyd there we go Thomas Johnson Alex B Will Evans everybody Elon Elon Musk um, we got Ronaldo Ronaldo's in the house okay oh. we'll take that or big Ronaldo uh, and then obviously Ponzi Fonzi no there is no Lambo trade today Ponzi Fonzi uh, but uh, thanks for asking what's up Zion Lala all right guys Let's take care of some housekeeping before we continue. We are brought to you by Search Trader, account funding of up to $1 million. Keep up to 90% of the profit. Enjoy relaxed trading rules with an 8% max trailing drawdown on all new accounts. Shout out to the folks there at Search Trader, who, by the way, I know the uh, the ad didn't populate, but they still have their trading competition on. You win 1,000 smackaroos if, and use 100,000 fake smackaroos. If you're top, you get some money, so make sure to give them a look. Good morning, Adara. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Um, Eli Lilly's running, so mm -hmm. I am all smiles. I actually have just got in on this. Then we kind of, um, the way Eli Lilly does is we got in, it kind of wow. fell back a little bit, but I was watching the tape on this one for a right. bit. I like 613. It keeps coming back to 613. I have a bit of faith in 613. Okay. Um, my, you know, honestly, like, for, for Eli Lilly, I find it a little bit difficult to set, like, so solid risk rewards because it kind of does what it does. We just fell below 612. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, if we go more than $2 below, I am out. But I didn't gotcha. take that many shares because Eli Lilly does Eli Lilly things. It does. How are you? How is Nexi? How is Nexi? We're, we're, in, we're involved in it right now. We're wetting our beak through the break of eight. There we go. We got another fill now. We're waiting at eight and a quarter on N-E-X-I. 241% North Adara. Um, just one in uh, many 
one of many small cap gappers that have been running as of late. It has been their season, and I've been telling you this. I've been telling you over and over, these bad boys come in waves, so be ready for them. If you are a small cap trader, you already know what I'm talking about. If you're an aspiring small cap trader, watch what we're, we're getting right now. You, these guys, they you know, usually there's one of them that kind of leads the way, being up several hundred percent in a day, and then, uh, you know, a week later, uh, up to a week later, we'll have multiple small cap gappers showing up uh, every day. And there we go, up into the 30s we go. Uh, we're gonna wet our beak a little bit over here. Boom, up into the high side. Almost about 75 pennies in the money on this bad boy. Let's see if we can run back near high day. High day on my charts around that 940-ish area, but they're all topping tail candles, which means you know either people are taking aggressive profit at that level or shorts are instituting around that nine-ish level. Uh, it's very similar to the wicking dance that we talk about on the future when we're at that 100 point level or that critical support or resistance. You, you kind of see it. Uh, the wicking candles kind of tip the hand of the shorts. When you have a breakthrough key level, then uh, an immediate move right back down. But we're going to have to watch NEXI uh, for to, to come back into my entry because this one cannot be trusted. Uh, it is not a large capper. It, it's not going to move as smooth as a large cap. Sometimes it does, but the hard and fast rule is that you really need to be on guard when you were trading these small cap gappers because in a heartbeat, they can turn on you. I know you mentioned the uh, the float today, Adara, on e an EXI, but it, it's worth repeating now that we're involved here. Uh, I have 758,850 share float. So about three quarters of a million shares uh, there. That's obviously very small. Already on the day of dare, we've done 38.4 million shares. So we've done the float rotation like 50 times over. And what I mean by float rotation is how many times have the total shares available for trading been traded over in that particular day. So float rotation, important metric to keep in mind when you're talking about these small cap gappers, you're typically never gonna get float rotation in a large or a mega cap. There's just way too many uh, tradable shares out there in the market uh, and just not enough, I guess, intraday interest. But on these small cap gappers, you definitely need to make sure uh, that you are aware of that. Now, quick housekeeping note. The Noss boss, yes, Michael Noss from Trade Ideas will be on at 11.30 today via webcam. He's going to be continuing with the theme that we've started this week, which is finding stocks to trade. As you guys know, Michael Noss is a swing trader extraordinaire, so that is going to be the focus of his uh, lesson today. He's going to be taking us through some of the scanners that he uses and that he mentions, by the way, on the morning show when he does it on Mondays and Fridays with Brendo and I at the big desk. He's often telling us about his swing trade ideas. Well, these guys these ideas don't come from thin air. They are derived from somewhere, and uh, the, the scanner that he's going to show us today is exactly where he gets that from, so we can't be more thankful to him for taking some of his time out of his day and uh, helping us learn about swing trading because I love swing trading. Yeah, I'm really excited. I know like not a lot about swing trading beyond just mm -hmm. like what I've heard from Michael Noss and from you and I was having some conversation actually when I went back to Winnipeg with some family friends who swing trade so I'm trying oh, to learn cool. a bit more but yeah, I'm excited to. That must um, have been an interesting conversation yeah, with you and your of, fam. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was kind of an interesting conversation. It was at mm -hmm. kind of like a family friend party and they were like, this guy was like, oh, I, I like swing trade and I was like, oh, cool. So we were just chatting about that. But yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm definitely learning more different perspectives and, and kind of I'm sure what you look for in a swing trade stock is going to be a bit different than these intraday stocks, especially as someone who A, I'm in the sim, still very much learning and B, I scalp a lot, right? So thinking about and contextualizing like a trade that you're going to be planning to be on for a bit longer, I think will be really interesting. And I think that that's one of the key aspects of stock picking that we've been talking about as well, right? Like stock picking and, and scanners and um what's on your watch list. It really does depend on the type of stocks you trade, the type of movement you're looking for. So I think this will be um, a really exciting conversation. I'm very excited to have um, Michael Moss come on here.
Uh, I'm pumped as well. All right, guys, uh, just to reiterate, the topic today is going to be swing trade scanners. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about watch lists. I'm going to be taking you through my entire watch list and all the different tickers I have under all the sectors. We're going to be talking about different data points to uh, have in your columns on your watch list. So things like uh, the amount of volume done, the 52-week highs, the year-to-dates, etc. We'll be talking about how I set up my watch list. That's all tomorrow. But today, we're going to be focusing on swing trading scanners and that will be starting 11 30 until now and then Adair and I will be trading and hopefully uh, you guys get some benefit out of that now with respect to NEXI let's talk a little bit about this bad boy here because I'm involved in it at the moment who knows for how long because this base here Adair at 750 has got to hold otherwise I want no part of this bad boy let's talk a little bit about why I got in where I got in what did I you know a lot about what I say about support flipping to resistance and yeah. resistance flipping to support. How about look at this bad boy over here? Resistance Ooh, Adara yeah. flips to support. what? There you go. And there it's you clean. Go. That's it's a clean. clean look. Yeah, it is. It is. Now, you obviously have to, uh, you know, account for these wicks. The wicks are there. They're always going to be there. It's always going to be the tug of war between buyers and sellers, but the general area, because it's an art, not a science, right? Not a science. So we can't really take these uh, perfunctory breaks, these wick breaks as, uh, you know, as a break of the level. No, it's, you know, it's an art, not science. All right, so here we go. So this one was a fantastic one when I was watching it earlier on at around... Um, yeah, 8.30, right before we came on the air, I was watching it around right here. And it was doing the wick dance with six bucks. It kept getting above six and then retracing below six. This over here means to me that shorts were getting involved at that $6 level. When you have these topping tail candles, it is a telltale sign that shorts are getting in, at, especially at key resistance levels, like the whole dollar level or, uh, you know, VWAP, if VWAP is in play on that particular instrument on the day. So this was uh, important to me because I saw that there were shorts that were interested in getting in this bad boy. So I was worried, right? Especially if a, a, bigger, uh, a bigger account came in and really pushed this bad boy down. I didn't get involved with it because obviously I had my morning duties to attend to. It came back into six previously where it had resistance because we knew shorts were getting in around there and then it did the exact opposite. It bounced off six, it did the wick dance off six, showing that buyers were overwhelming sellers at six bucks and then rocketed into that 950 area, Dara. Technically, the high of day is 943. And then we came right back into support. Previous support, which is the crest over here on this high through 750. So we're holding 750 now, but we're awfully close to getting stopped out after you know taking out the majority of the position. But here we go, coming back into 750. And so if this one breaks, uh, 750 to the side, Lee, I will hit the flattened key to get rid of this bad boy, but the, clearly there's a buyer here at 750 as it is holding. Ooh, uh, holding that was well. really interesting there at the 750 level. Clearly there's a hidden buyer at the 7.5. Let's see how this manifests because as quickly as that buyer was there, as quickly as they can pull the order or they can get overwhelmed with a bigger seller, but 750 holding for now. Not surprised though, as we talked about that area being uh, support previously resistance Adair. Yeah, it's a really clean look there on um, on Nexi. Yeah, I like that. that. Congrats on that trade. That's a Thanks. beautiful trade. That's a, a one that kind of popped out of nowhere midway through um, when I was at the big desk, and I was like, "What, what are you doing, Nexi?" So, <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a cool one. And I saw that. Yeah, I knew all the small caps were moving today, and I figured you'd be very much into that. So I'm happy that Nexi has been working out. Eli Lilly, I, I will admit, I took an L L Y here on this. Um, this first trade in Eli Lilly because I think I, I wanted, I was seeing a bit of um, strength at this 612. I got involved way too high, I'll admit that. I still gave myself about a dollar to move to the upside, it just didn't work out. I basically, th this 1050 ended up being where the lower low was. We broke that, I broke out, I left the trade. I'm trying to get back in around this 1125. Um, so if we can get uh, to 11 or 61125, 1125, 61125, if we can get to that point, um, then I'd be really interested in a long and I would take profit out probably around the 613 because I like previous high levels for profit takers. Mm. Um, I didn't take very many shares either time. And again, like all, um, you know, in the sim, uh, scalp, you know, just scalp trading in the sim. But yeah, we'll have to see how this works out. Eli Lilly answers to no woman. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> see if she's, if she's feeling like she's, we're gonna work out here. Also, NVIDIA is kind of doing interesting things here. So let's pull out 
let's pull up NVIDIA. Um, this is NVDS. I saw the $30 and I was like, I pulled up the wrong chart. <laughs> NVIDIA. Okay, hi, NVIDIA. Yeah, I like, Hello. I'm interested in this. Um, if we get to that 479, if we break above that area, because we had a little bit of consolidation here earlier today, so I would like to break above that, then you know I would be taking some profit at this 481, 481.25, because I like just trying to get out here before it gets um, too late. Also, Why Brothers United, I need more ginger tea with honey. I do have a little tea here that yep, I made yep, before yep. With, with honey. Um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, I, I do like the look of, but yeah, thank you everybody for the, the support, I appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, I like the look of an NVIDIA long. This is very much, look at also the support that we had at 474 Beauty. earlier. Like this is That's like really good. solid. Yep. So I, I feel pretty good about this, even though we're still slightly down on the day. I'm also eyeing Tesla, but I think Tesla's got a lot of work to do before I look at that one. Because um, we, we looked sort of, we were about to break above VWAP, and then we ducked back below. We're kind of holding this um, 9 EMA pretty well, actually, this 239 area. And I mean, one could argue you sort of steadily stepping back to the upside, but we're down about 3.75%. So I'm going to wait on that. Also, it looks like I got filled in Eli Lilly. So I should, um, we got a Philly here in Eli Lilly. Um, as long as we don't make a lower low, I'm gonna stay in this. Um, right now we're down about 50 cents, but like I said, not very many shares, just trying to focus on getting in, getting out type thing. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Mike Cron, perfunctory. Uh, sorry, misspelled, means carried out with minimal of effort. Good word. No, thank you, resident uh, dictionary Michael Cron in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's a word that I like to use off and on. Sometimes we'll use it more. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it'll fall out of favor and you won't hear it for a while. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those ones that uh, the chat seems to like for whatever reason. Um, uh, I wanted to mention about... Um, some other small cap gappers here. I'm just trying to keep my eye on NEXI because I don't have a stop in place. And so I'm going to have to use my flat key. There, it, NEXI is not the only small cap gapper running today. There are plenty. And here they are. There's five that I'm keeping my eye on. One's kind of fallen out of favor. The other four are still in play. They go by A, B, V, C. Uh, up nicely on the day, doing a little bit of a dance here with VWAP at that $12.10 area. We'll talk about that one in a minute. HLP, another one up 37% almost. This one's kind of bullflagging here, uh, holding the 10 EMA like a glove. Look at this, really holding it. Uh, any dips at the 10 EMA have been bought up, but clearly there is resistance at three bucks. Every wick into $3 has been sold off eventually on HLP. Keep your eye on that one. And then SIDU. S-I-D-U. Yes, Neil, I do remember that story, and I am smirking inside uh, because uh, Neil gave us a, an interesting story about S-I-D-U uh, with respect uh, to uh, a person his friend met in the drunk tank when, uh, was it New Year's Eve? It was just a random weekend? I like that you added the news. Okay, okay, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't New Year's Eve. It was a random weekend. SIDU up 69.15% today. Finding support here at the 11 and a quarter area where VWAP is now back into 11, almost 12 bucks. This one's really pumping here. Let's talk a little bit about the deets on SIDU uh, with respect to float. Uh, the float on this bad boy is, one moment please, yeah, very small, 764,000 shares, very similar to NEXI is SIDU. They're both uh, very micro float, you could call these. So these are the five that I'm watching today in small cap gapper world, NEXI, LBPH, kind of giving up the ghost now, but still up on the day, SIDU, HLP, and ABVC. That one is also at that $2 mark at VWAP as well. So we'll see how that one does. I got to tell you, though, with respect to NEXI, I am cautiously optimistic about this 750 level holding, yet there is this other side of, to, uh, of me that is more uh, is growing in pessimism. And the reason is, is because every single um, ascent is lower than the previous ascent. That, typic that translates into lower highs, okay? And lower highs with a flat bottom at 750 is a descending wedge or descending triangle, and that is what we call here a flat bottom break, one of the possible flat bottom break scenarios that you can get in trading. That 750 though, um, you know, looking more and more likely that it will break below 750's VWAP, which is hanging around at seven and a quarter, seven and one fifth, 
in and around that area. But the trade will end for me if that 750 level is broken. We're in at 755, so that's about five pennies worth of risk. But the lower highs making me uh, quite concerned here that we're not able to make any higher highs. So shows, you know, incrementally that sellers or shorts are overwhelming buyers incrementally until that 750 level is just no longer in play. And here we go again, 750 showing up here on the bid. Does that hidden buyer, uh, the iceberg that was there, hold up like it did last time? Or do we get cream this time around? Adair, I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, I mean, like, best of luck. This is a very, like, these small caps are very stressful individuals. That's why I usually, they are. Um, it's not really my, my cup of tea. And I think, like, congrats on this because it's a really good look. Nexi has been crazy. And there's so many opportunities with small caps today for sure. Even doing the small cap recap, it was uh, earlier today, it was a lot of like, which one do I pick? There's so many, right. which is not always the case. NVIDIA, though, I got in this NVIDIA. I like the look of NVIDIA. I know I said I was going to wait till this uh, 479.50, but I saw a bit of support around 478.50, and I was like, I'll take it to 479.50. Get a dollar. I'm not going to complain about that. My out is, or my stop, I guess, is if we get out 478, below 478, because that's a lower low. It also ends up being about a one to two risk to reward ratio. So not a bad look. I think one thing I'm working on, too, especially with that, the, you know, the kind of um, not the best Eli Lilly trades uh, is I think I need to like really get my risk to reward kind of my head on straight with risk to reward because I think the biggest issue with some of those Eli Lilly trades beyond the fact that at least the first one I think I've gotten way too high is it's like you need to I need, really need to be considering like what's the point of getting in on this like how much how much bang are you going to get for your buck if it works out you know right. what I mean so I think that's something I need to work on with this NVIDIA trade I do like the risk to reward I am enjoying the look of this. Um, I, we're struggling a little bit now around this uh, 478.50, but I think, um, and what, what does scare me too is are these like failed wicks to the upside. But you know, like if we break below the new low, the 478, I'm outie. Um, I do not. Boy. Pardon? Holla at your boy. Holla at your boy. So I don't think this is um, uh, a bad look here for um, NVIDIA. We'll have to see what we do. Tesla's still a little bit meandering. It's trying to figure out what it wants to be when it grows up. So I'm going to let it do that um, in the comfort of its own chart and not get involved just yet. But I do like, yeah, I like the look of NVIDIA. We're going to have to see how this um, how this shakes out. It looks like 478.50 is pretty solid support right now. How goes next? Week? It's good. We're knocking on the door of eight bucks again. So uh, I hope somebody opens uh, that door because clearly uh, while we didn't really have resistance at eight bucks, now we're getting it uh, for whatever reason. Now we just got another beak wetter there at 95 to kind of de-risk a little bit. Now holding much smaller position. These are all the outs. We've been kind of doing the dance here. Uh, within this range sailor moon pointing out in the chat that there seems to be uh resistance at that 846 i'm gonna go ahead and say you know that 850 ish area and i think what they're referring to are uh, these ascents over here or this crest over here and another crest over here right back down when we knock at eight now right back down into seven and two thirds this one is volatile to say the least I'm talking about NEXI, but from the corner of my eye, I can see HLP now at that $3 again, and it's putting incrementally higher highs. Now, the notional move on HLP is not nearly as, uh, you know, as aggressive or as much um, as uh, NEXI. Let's pull up HLP on this screen over here so we can look. HLP, which is on the NASDAQ. There we go. Uh, we're at that $3 on Pardon me, on HLP. I got to tell you, though, with respect to the amount of volume done on HLP, it's bubkiss, 1.14 million. Compare that to NEXI, which has, I'll tell you in a second, uh, yeah, almost 40 million shares. So uh, big difference here in terms of liquidity between NEXI and HLP. So I'm going to try to be... Uh, you know, more selective about what I choose, but the, the volume could find its way into HLP, especially if it really gets going here. Anyway, uh, back into NXI, we'll have a, we'll, we'll keep watching this to see what it does. Maybe I'll set up a stop uh, below here so that I don't have to watch it like a hawk. Let's see what the chat's up to here. Silver Moon, got you. Jordan Smith, do you like shorts on RBLX paying me so far? I haven't had a look, Jordan. I'll do that in a second. Almog, um, may you give your take on ABVC News? How's it working? I'm looking right at it. It's doing the dance with no pants here uh, at VWAP at two bucks. Uh, Almog on ABVC. 
It's putting incrementally lower highs and lower lows, so I'm a little concerned about that, but it's still one of the main major runners that I'm keeping my eye on, ABVC up over 70%, uh, around 74% at the moment. We'll get to that one in a sec, I promise. Uh, Callum Mitchell Miller, no, that was Sailor Moon. Um, he says, Callum Mitchell Miller says, I think uh, any XI will be a good one to trade tomorrow. Shout out to you. Uh, Diamond Realtor of Miami, what's up? One of the OGs of the chat. HLP has no volume. You're right, my man. I couldn't agree more on that. Just finished saying that. Adam Deleuze, what's up, my man? Big Adam Deleuze, what's up? Much love. I can't read. Much love and respect, bro. Great Instagram story earlier. Thank you, my man. Yes, Mr. Wonderful, Chef Wonderful, whatever you want to call him, uh, did uh, post uh, our interview uh, from last week with him on his Instagram. So I was happy about that. You know, I had, yeah, to, I had awesome. to put that back up on my Instagram. Um, but here we go again, Adara. NEXI back into that key support level at 750. That breaks, I'm out. Yeah, that's a really, I think if that breaks, it'll be massive too, because it's a very, like, that. it's holding that support level really well. Yeah, um, but the lower highs are making me worried. No, that's that's the same actually yeah. with me and, and NVIDIA, because we did have this really solid 474 support. And then I realized, I was like, Adara, why did you not think about this? Because we have lower highs. We're down in the day. I'm like, what if this ends up flat bottom breaking? But you know what? I do have a key plan of exit. If we uh, leave this 478, I'm no. out. I also had to change my strategy for profit taking a little bit here, because... Um, I was noticing through the scalpulating, I had um, I, I was ready to get out. I had my order like set to get um, to get out at 479.50. We did not quite get there, but we actually did get to 479. So I was planning if we get there, which now I'm kind of doubting, um, I'm getting out at 479, um, but or at least partially out at 479, and then I'll see if it pays for the dream. Shout out to Sharif. Um, it looks like now we're holding okay around this 478.30 area. I just think NVIDIA needs to you know, to make up her mind pretty soon because I'm getting a little bit antsy here. Okay. Um, as someone who's a bit scalpier naturally, just kind of waiting for NVIDIA to like, you know, tiptoe around this like 20 cent range is a little bit, a little bit dicey for me. But you know, now she's moving back to the upside. So there we go. Yeah, I think my biggest, one of my biggest things for trading, and I know Sharif and I had this conversation earlier on, is I'm working on my patience. Bang. It's a it's a big thing for me, and I think that's why I like scalping. And I think also we actually we were having this conversation earlier today too off mm. camera, um, which is the idea that like I think you know you have to kind of stick true to who you are as a trader. And yep. I think with that in mind, like you know I I do think I'm naturally scalpier, and I think that's not a bad thing. But I think staying patient in the scalps is something I could perhaps work on a little bit of food for thought here. Also, yeah, so I did get out of Eli Lilly with some losses on both my attempts to trade that, but now Eli Lilly is back to the upside. If we make a new high, I might take the smallest, like a scintilla of shares, the smallest amount of shares, I might hop back in, but I'd be very cautious just because Eli Lilly and I have not been besties right now. Apparently, Neo's moving here. Fatima and Alex saying Ooh. Neo's popping. You wanna have a look? Let's look at Neo. Ooh. Where'd this come from all of a sudden? Yeah, Usually Chinese ADRs don't Neo. move midday like this. Yeah, but. well, I know Baba as well has been has been popping off a little bit. But yeah, Neo, I it was the, I know about the convertible notes here. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Let me find my Benzinga because I always have the Neo. There we go. Um, Neo. Yeah, you want me to have a look uh, for uh, what's going on with Neo? Yeah, Here it I'm is. I'm not seeing. Shares are trading lower Wednesday. The company announced a repurchase right notification for its 0% convertible senior notes due in 2026. So this is typically bearish, but for whatever reason, it seems to be popping up, Adara. What to know? Neo said it is notifying holders of its 0% convertible senior notes due in 2026 that each holder has the right to require the company to repurchase all or any portion multiples of $1,000 of its notes for cash per its indentured date. January 15th, 2021. So I'm not really sure how that is a bullish catalyst, but uh, the market liking that for whatever reason. And uh, there you go. Okay, Adara, before I send it to you, there is the flat bottom break on NEXI. And this is why I got out of it when it came into that 750. There it goes. Descending wedge, guys. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. All with that 750 flat bottom. Saad Mahmoud, shout out to you in the chat. He pointed that out. He's like classic flat bottom break on NEXI. And that's what we were saying. That's what I was concerned with. But the fact of the matter is it was holding that 750. We were able to profit off it and it didn't take any L's on this. So 
please this punch, as Adira likes to say, on the trade on NEXI. But the fact of the matter is that 750 came and went. And now the shorts or the sellers are in control, at least for the moment. We are at VWAP, though, on NEXI. That's the next kind of level we need to concern ourselves with. It's around that 7 and 1 fifth area, around that yeah, 717 on this chart. Let's see on this chart. Yeah, 718 or so. Um, I'm talking about uh, VWAP on the NEXI. Let's see if this one continues down. But the lower highs really kind of had me concerned, and that's why we got out right here, right when it came into that 750, and I started seeing the bids uh, on that 750 level, and the bids start to get eaten up. I was like, no, no, thank you. We outie. Uh, we outie. M we outie, yeah. M. Allen, English, please, Habibi, can you explain the note thing? <laughs> you know, brother, you know, it's just essentially, uh, you know, another way for them to raise cash. They issue these notes, which is a form of debt. So instead of being an equity holder where you hold stock, you hold onto Neo's debt, and then they can convert that um, usually in a contract. So it's, a, it's an agreement that you get into with them once you buy their debt at that particular date. It can then be converted into equity or whatever other instrument it can be converted into. That's basically essentially what you're seeing here. It's another way for them to raise money, right? We know that EV startups especially are cash strapped. Um, it costs a lot of money to be able to scale battery production, to be able to scale, um, you know, assembly lines, et cetera. So they basically need money. I got you, I got you. All right, guys, the NOS boss has arrived. It is 11.30. We're going to be talking with Michael Noss today, as we mentioned on the top of the show, about swing trade scanners. He is a swing trader extraordinaire. Michael Noss... How are you, sir? Extraordinaire. I'll take that. I don't know <laughs> if it's warranted, but I'll, def I'll definitely take it. We're only saying the truth, Michael. So, <laughs> um, All right, Michael. So I, as I, in my email uh, to you, I don't know if you had an opportunity to, to kind of see the midday show as of late, but uh, you know, yep. it's more of a learn to trade. We talk about different themes every week. This week, Michael, we're talking about um, scanners and finding stocks to trade. And one thing that I really want to drive home with a lot of people is swing trading. It's something that you can you know, do outside market hours, do a lot of charting, do a lot of scanning. So what's your, uh, what's your take here? How do, how do we get started with that? Yeah, so uh, swing trading, I think, is is a great place for a lot of people who, uh, you know, like myself and like others, maybe they have something on the go, they have jobs, they um, even are day trading all day, right? And then they want to look to see if there's something that can be held for a longer move. Um, it's, to me, it's the advantage and the reason we trade equities as opposed to just trading a futures contract or, or Forex or something like that is the wide breadth of things that we get to trade you know um there are people out there who very successfully will just focus on a single name or or a single security but when it comes to swing trading there's going to be times that everything or anything is in play so it makes sense to utilize the scanner and to and to try to figure out kind of what hits your your style so right perfect i see up on my screen here this is one of the first places i go to now this is right on our website this is the new tradeideas.com um, and we have something that we have called the sector scope. And this is, to me, just showing uh, this main list right here of everything that's going on in the market. And this is where I start every day when it's time to start and try to figure out what it is that I want to swing. Because, A, I want to know, hey, how's the market doing? But I want to know each individual sector. So what this heat map is showing us, it's showing us where the strength and where the weakness in different sectors are. You can see UNG, the is big and green right there so we know that natural gas is gapping up and actually doing really well today uh fxi which is china big uh big chat big cap china that's doing very well as well and then we have tan which is solar and that's gapping down so this gets me a general feel now you see even though the green is very big you see more in the red boxes than you do in the green so right before i've even gotten to look at the market or done anything like that i have a general feel of what's going on if i want to look for things i know i'm either going to be looking for dip buys or i'm going to be looking for stocks that are in these sectors like china or natural gas because those are are holding up today even in a weak tape um from there 
you know, there's a kind of a wide breadth of, of things you can do. But I also like to go in and look at this chart down here, which is our uh, advancers versus decliners. So it's basically just showing me the same thing. How many stocks are up today versus how many stocks are down? You can see way more red than green. So right under the hood, I get a general pick and a general idea of what the market's doing. And from there, I zoom in Sharif. Um, yeah, so we can go over. Let's go into here. So, Michael, when you come yep. on on the morning show, typically uh, you have trade ideas for us um, that you were able to kind of elicit um, from trade ideas. I know that was a bit of a redundancy, but I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we picked we picked a good name, right? Didn't we? Yeah, not bad. And that's kind of the whole idea of this week's uh, this week's um, topic is finding trade yeah. ideas. So, is there a particular scanner that we can set up, Michael, using the trade idea software that helps us look for swing trades? Because I know that there are certain parameters that you look for for swings. Yeah, I've got a couple picked out. I've got a couple for the people who like gappers on my screen here. And then I've got a couple for people who are looking for more uh, longer term swing. So um, we can just get that out of the way for now. So at Trade Ideas, you can scan for pretty much whatever you want, right? And and that's great that we have this kind of flexibility and functionality. But then it also creates the question of, okay, now what do I scan for? Um, so I'm going to go over some of my process when it comes to the day. Just know that if you don't like this process or if there's something you want to tweak of these, you certainly can do it with the product. So first thing I want to look at right away is gaps. Um, and I measure gaps a little bit differently. I don't know how much we want to get into the nerd speak, but most of the time you hear gaps measured as a percentage or a dollar. The stock's up $5 or it's up. 3%. For me, and one thing that we can do in trade ideas that I love is looking at gaps compared to how much that stock normally moves. And we do this with a standard deviation count. Um, so when I take a look at, at Nexi, uh, N-E-X-I, which I know you were, you were talking about while I was in the green room there, um, it's up 200%. So obviously that would stand out right away anyway. But I know this is 20 standard deviations. Now, again, without getting into all the nerd speak, uh, it essentially means that this is a very, very, very unlikely event, even for something that if you're looking at the daily chart on Nexi, gaps quite frequently. So that's the first thing I want to do is I want to look to see, is there any theme to the gaps of the day? Is there any themes of, of anything that I'd be interested in? Right. The other day we had both up and down the Bitcoin miners gapping, all of that. Now, that's great for someone who wants to chase momentum. But if you're someone who's more like me and you want to get your setups ahead of time, I'm going to have two scanners that I'm going to push you to. And again, I can share this entire layout. If you come get hit me up on Twitter, uh, you can just, or uh, go to trade-ideas.com and, and do the help there. I'll give them this link so you can share. Uh, and the two things I want to focus on is one, TI strength. So TI strength is an algorithm that I built over here at Trade Ideas, and it essentially ranks all stocks in the market by how strong they are based off a whole series of proprietary indicators. Um, and basically incorporating all of these different well-known indicators and some proprietary ones to give us an idea of what is weak and what is strong. So for example, if it's above its 200 day moving average, it's gonna get a couple points. If the MACD is showing positive, it's gonna get a couple points. And what this does is every 30 seconds or so ranks the entire market by what's happening in this system. And you can probably see it real time update here as well. This is something I focus on as a swing trader for two reasons. One, we have the back test. So we know that investing in names that are strong like this and through this algorithm will outperform the market over the time. The other thing that I do is it gives me sometimes an early warning sign of when a sector is going to become hot. So I was doing a little bit of scanning before I popped on here and noticed that insurance names, uh, both yesterday and today, are all over this thing when it comes to WRB, uh, UNH, which is I think the largest Dow component there is right now, uh, a whole bunch of these insurance names. So I could either use that to play one of these names if I if I want to, or I could just use it to play the entire sector, knowing that that sector is strong. Uh, another one that I want to highlight as a scan that I really love is my short squeeze candidates. Now, a filter that we have that we love at Trade Ideas is just how heavily shorted is a stock. Anyone who's traded through the GameStop or in the GME era of a few years ago knows that if shorts get a little bit too wild, 
things can get can get crazy. And if you're a swing trader and you're able to hold something from the long side for multiple days, these short floats can really come into play. This is what I brought you guys Mara at ten dollars, and that was the main synopsis of it. I think it was forty percent shorted at the time, and I was breaking out of this base. And in that conversation, I mentioned that not only do I want something that's heavily shorted, but I want something that's heavily shorted in an uptrend. If somebody is shorting a stock and that is a bad stock that's going down all the time or or a stock that's going bankrupt, uh, like Bed Bath & Beyond did, those shorts aren't nervous because they're making money and they can cover any time. And if the stock goes bankrupt, they don't have to cover, right? They get to make all their money. So if you combine a high short float with something that would make a short nervous, which is the stock going up, then I think you're really on to something. So that's what this list is doing, is it's showing me stocks that have at least a 20% short float, probably higher, and then also hitting new highs. Our question for you there. One, I heard you yep. say you look for themes with respect to gappers. So are you looking for a particular industry or sector that may be gapping up as a result of some macroeconomic event that's causing them all to kind of pump up together? That's, I guess, question number one. And then question number two, with your respect to your proprietary scanner, uh, you're including things like MACD and other things, each one giving a certain amount of points to the stock with an accumulative total. So is that like a kind of uh, a balance of the evidence type approach where you're taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that? Yeah. No, that's exactly right, Shree. So the, with the gappers, yeah, I'm looking for, you guys know I don't read the news. I, I don't know anything about the news. Um, <laughs> so with the gapper question, yeah, I am focusing heavily on what sector is potentially moving? What 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 may be in play? And are these things gapping to an area that's interesting to me as a swing trader? I don't generally want to buy something that's gapping 200 or 300%. But if I notice that there is uh, maybe, let's say, an AI theme to the gappers this morning, maybe the AIs are gapping up all the different AI plays, that may me, get me interested to look at other names that I think will benefit from some sort of AI news. I don't need to know what the news is. The, the market is already digesting that news for me with the gappers. But if I see, um, you know, the ticker AI and what o S O U N and all of these AIs gappers, that might make me look at something like NVIDIA, right? I might say, okay, is NVIDIA moving with it? Um, if not, let me do my technical analysis on it and see what levels it could break to maybe catch up to these names. That kind of gathering a theme and then um, abilities around that theme, which is something we can do here in Trade Ideas as well, where this list I just brought up is going to be all of the, comp the competitor's name and all of the sector's name inside this one. So if I bring up NVIDIA, you'll see AMD and uh, Enphase and a lot of these things inside this list. Now, when it comes to the, um, the TI strength, the algorithm, yeah, we're looking for a weight of the evidence. So sometimes, um, which is perfectly put, Sharif, but sometimes you'll notice that there's a lot of things that are rank ranking... Um, 80s and 90s and, and even higher with a cap of 100, which is telling me that the whole market is strong. And these are the strongest names out of the strong market. But even when the market is weak, sometimes the highest ranking there is, is 80 or, or 70s. I'm still looking at those because those are showing me relative strength. And I talk about this all the time. And I know you guys talk about it for day trading as well. I want to find the strongest names because they're the strongest names because institutions are either buying them or at the very least not selling them. So as opposed to just waiting for a moving average to cross or a stock to break out or something like this, um, sometimes you're better, like Sharif mentioned, the weight of the evidence approach by saying, hey, just show me the strongest stuff and then let me do the technical analysis on those after that. I really like that um, market competitor scanner, uh, Michael. I didn't even know that Trade Ideas had that. That's a hell of a one to include. All right, uh, Michael, for the uh, for the viewers that want to use your uh, proprietary scanner, the one that you were just talking about, can, how do they get that if they are already subscribed to Trade Ideas? Yeah, well, so we have what we call. So one thing I can just show you guys real quick. We have yep. what we call a channel bar. So if you're new to trade ideas and you don't want to customize and build anything like we have, if you go and you just click on your program and hit a new channel bar under TI Swing Picks, we have it right here. So you're talking about swing tradings and it's loaded right up. You can also 
go to uh, trade-ideas.com. The support will help you out there. I'll give them access to this. Um, or you can just hit me up on Twitter. Any, any of those ways, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we get that one to you. Michael Noss, as insightful as always. Thank you very much, my friend, guys. Michael Noss, Chartered Market Technician with Trade Ideas. Thanks for being on, Michael. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. You too. Take care. The NOS boss dropping some hot lines there. That was fantastic. Yeah, and the so fact much. that you can just load up that swing trader scanner without actually having to do anything, it's all there built in to the Trade Ideas terminal. Guys, make sure you check out Trade Ideas, tradeideas.com, and use the code TRADERTV20 for 20% off. You could have had 25 yesterday if you signed up yesterday. Today, capitalism being what it is, it's only 20. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, thank you so much to Michael for that. Um, really insightful. I learned a lot. I use trade ideas every morning while formulating yes, um, the watch list. The scanners are, I find really helpful, especially because kind of my first experience with watch list has been, you know, at the big desk before yes. I was trading, just looking at the scanners. So can really give you a sense of what's moving. Um, very, very good stuff and really great to have him on here, especially this um, scanner week. So yes, I think that's very cool. Uh, yes. So here, I think he did it like this docked window. So yeah. Lane Nightmare, thank you. Docked window, there we go. We'll just call this swing test, right? For those who have it. Um, oh. I think it was docked. Um, what was it? I think docked it was the thing above another. it. Was it? it? Okay. Again. So let's load up this bad boy over here. I what it looked like. Uh, so tools, new, docked. Docked a channel bar. Docked, docked channel, channel bar. bar. That's it, you're right. And then swing picks right there. Yeah. Shout out to Dara for paying attention. That's where uh, that's where I fail. <laughs> yeah. I just have the weird memory too, though. So I think it's a combo. Right. Yeah. TI, that's uh, what he called it. TI strength right there. So that's what the NOS boss was talking about. Shout out to him. We'll definitely be using that. Look at Chile Nightmare in the chat. NOS is my fave. The Chilean nightmare has had a say. So there we go, baby. He he's on the ones and twos again on his yeah. own today. All right? Shout yeah. out to Fabian, killing yeah. it. So I love that he has the bang button for himself. I love that <laughs> yes. so much. He deserves yeah. it, baby. Woo um, all right. Yeah, killing it. So we will be looking at that multiple times today, but um, because that's kind of the theme of the, of the day, Dara. But I just want to mention, guys, N-E-X-I, as the NOS boss was talking, started rocketing to the north side, and it did hold that VWAP. Uh, the closing prints all at that 715, 720 area. Sure, wick down right into that 7-ish area, but uh, that was a quick wick. But the closing prints all around VWAP. And then, boom, goes the dynamite rocketing up about a uh, dollar, let's say, where did it come up to? Uh, it went basically to 875. So about a buck 75 in a matter of minutes started flying up. But it's doing the dance here again at a buck. So volatility is this stock's middle name today. Uh, believe me when I tell you. Make sure that you're getting it off key resistance levels. Don't chase this one. Uh, it, you know, hey, look, you may get lucky on it. You may get lucky. Try to get it off key resistance and support levels if you can. Wait for your entry. Don't FOMO into this. Uh, I think you'll you'll probably won't be very happy. But uh, that's uh, that's a look there, Dara. I'm just gonna send it to you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think um, next immune, nexi, if you will. Um, volatility is the middle name. Sharif was right, but I think it's also an interesting example of like all you can kind of do is stick to your risk reward, right? Because sometimes the stock will end up like you know having you kick yourself. But it's like if you, if you stuck with your principles, then that's sometimes what matters as well, right? That's one thing I feel like I'm kind of learning here as well. Also, Michael Noss in the chat. Um, thank you so much again for coming in here. Um, great to have you on uh, the midday or how to trade. Um, yeah, really appreciated that. And I feel like as someone, again, who's like knows very little about little about swing trading, I think it was a very good opportunity and learn more about trade ideas as well. So new features, the, the doc channel bar, very interesting stuff. But yeah, I mean, Tesla, someone said test WAP. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's, te it's testing VWAP. Um, it's trying. I think I think I'd be more interested, like I said, if we could actually break above VWAP because Tesla is extremely down on the day, but we have been um, since 1015 making higher highs and higher lows. Um, that said, it would be a much more convincing bull case for me if we break above VWAP. Um, yeah, goat. Yeah, I'm just laughing at the chat here. Yes, the goat, Michael Noss. Also, Eli Lilly, I'm, I'm still have my eye on. Yeah, I'm going to be really honest. Like today, the trading has not been really um, for, I've not been, I've not been trading at my best. And I think I'm just going to be really honest about that. So I'm trying to like kind of wait and 
and take a moment. And I mean at my best, I'm saying that I'm still very new, um, you know, to begin with as well, right? But I think I, I like the look of, of Eli Lilly still. Like I said, if we make a higher high, I'd be more interested. But I like ranges as well. So if this, like, um, 6.11 to 6.12-ish, 6.12.50, Sorry, 612.50 area continues to kind of prove itself as a range. I'll get in and out of that. You know what I mean? Because my attempt to kind of trade when I thought was going to be continued to move to the upside, it just did not really work out for me. And same with NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, oh, not a New York stock, Adara, come on. NVIDIA and Q. NVIDIA, I, I went to get out of this around uh, 478. I switched the charts. I did forgot to set my stop loss, and we swooped to the downside Shoop. here. Swoop, yeah. Wish it was a more fun swoop, which alas, it was not. But we're picking up a little bit here at VWAP. Really nice consolidation here, 477. I like that failed wick to the downside. The buyers eating up the sellers here like Pac-Man at this um, <laughs> 477, 50 area. So I might I might hop back in on this, but I, you know, I want to be patient. Um, what concerns me too is much like what happened with Nexi, where it looks like it could have moved to the upside and ended up flat bottom breaking. Nvidia does have this really solid bottom of um, 474, and it's down on the day, which makes me a little bit nervous. So I am, um, yeah, I'm gonna wait. Also, Michael Noss saying in the chat, anytime you yeah. want me to pop on, I am down. And CMT stands for Chartered Market Technician. It's a certification for technical analysis. Yeah, it's Very like cool. one of like it's like the holy grail yes. uh, for some of this stuff. I, I dabbled with it a little bit, but uh, time ran out on my side. Uh, hopefully, I'll get back into that in this year, guys. Let's have a look at what big tech is doing today. Um, the short is still in play on Apple, much to my chagrin, because I'm holding this in my personal account. Look at this pop up on AAPL into VWAP. Beautiful rejection off that 184 in a third area comes coming into that resistance zone, and right back down we go. Looks like we have you know the low of day. I don't want to say support because we'll have to see once it gets gets tested again. But that 183 and a half. Um, is a level of support, the double bottom here on the five minute chart around 10, 50, 11. And then a move back up into 184 and a half just resulted now in four red five minute candles in a row. So Apple continuing its weak side move uh, on the back of, I guess, you know, there were several tail uh, headwinds uh, in uh, the in the later part of last year. It was the uh, ban on selling its uh, wearables and then they got that taken care of with a court of appeal decision. And then obviously it was the Barclays downgrade yesterday and then today DA Davidson having their say with a price target downgrade, not downgrading the stock but reducing its price target on AAPL so continues to be weak here I gotta tell you though the one that really looks like it is having a decent day and it's also supported by um, the percentage up is Google <laughs> this one yeah shout out to the OB1 Kenobi but this one put in a bit of a pennant so initially we had that big move up right so we know that uh, that's the first part of a pennant. And then we got the high here at around 183 and a half. And then we start putting in lower highs. But at the same time we were putting in lower highs, we started putting in higher lows. So a bit of a compression pattern. And guess what? The compression pattern ended up manifesting correctly because what preceded it was an uptrend. And the compression pattern ended up breaking through the uptrend there, uh, or the uptrend line, I should say, through 184 and a half. Now we're knocking on the door of 139 with the high of day of 138.95. Google looking awfully good today though. That 139 came into play for whatever reason in the aftermarket yesterday around uh, 535. We touched that 139 only to retrace off it. So 139 in my view today is a possible resistance level if we don't make it all the way up. Now, I gotta tell you, uh, pivot point over here may, may have gotten this one wrong because we gapped below the pivot point today. And so if you were you know, trying to follow the pivot point uh, technique, you'd be looking short. And that's exactly where we started out our life today on Google, 137 and change is where we were at at the, the opening bell. Sorry, 136 and change, pardon me. and. Yeah, we've just been moving up since that time on uh, G-O-O-G-L. So I, I know the Katina man took this one short and he made money on it, but uh, I guess uh, yeah, that was a counter trend trade for him because Google still stepping, stair stepping up to the high side, half a point uh, in the clear here. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, Softy. You know, I want to say Softy is uh, looking the same as Google because it's not. It kind of put in that same initial move. 
uh, at 9.30 where we popped up off that 367 and a half a dare and we got all the way up to 373 and a quarter. But since that time, we've been putting in lower highs with a flat bottom right at that pivot point area, which is the dotted green line on my chart. Right at that 371, it's only up 0.04% on the day. Nothing like Google. So initially, they looked uh, similar, but Google with the sustained buying softy dying out here. It's really the only one that I can really talk about uh, as strong. Everything else weak, uh, including Tesla. Obviously, we know Amazon as well. Uh, Meta rejecting off the pivot point, uh, top left corner over here on your screen. So I'll have to keep an eye on some of these bad boys. But the NQ... The NQ is really holding on for dear life here as it continues to put lower highs, lower lows. Yeah, I was going to say Microsoft really seems to be holding that pivot point oddly as kind of a point of support there, which is which is interesting. Um, but yeah, Microsoft, yeah, it's kind of an interesting one. I need to look at that a little bit longer. Eli Lilly continuing to pop. I'm waiting for us to break 613 and then I'm back down because I want to get in on this, but I don't want to also just sit around and watch the stock. So kind of, you know, kind of conflicted here. It's on my side chart. I'm going to let it do its thing, 21. Moderna mm. also on my side chart, left over from yesterday. Have not paid it any mind, but maybe I should have given it some TLC because Moderna's had um, the hero's journey today. Oh, my gosh, look at this. So we, we kind of fell from grace a little bit, but we were still up on the, like, you know, we were still slightly positive in pre-market, especially earlier in the pre-market, um, with a lot of these other names being really negative. Moderna and Pfizer were still positive after having really strong days. Specifically, Moderna yesterday, I think, closed at around 13% to the upside. We did have that catalyst, the Oppenheimer upgrade, and then also a letter to the shareholders saying sales growth by 2025 due to some vaccines. Then, though, today, uh, today we were kind of, you know, splendidly hanging out pre-market. We <laughs> fell after open. I think at one point we were down around here, down about 4%. Then, um, apparently, the Florida, the Surgeon General of Florida saying that um, he would like to halt all the Moderna COVID vaccines for um, test-related reasons, I guess, concerned about the safety. So I think that's kind of an interesting catalyst. It hasn't really impacted Moderna still to the upside, but definitely one that I've been keeping an eye on. Um, in addition to the fact that it was already on my side chart left over from yesterday, I need to refresh my side charts more often. Shreve's very on the ball about that, and I am less on the ball about that, refreshing the side charts. Because, mm. I mean, I have my, my yeah. Meg 7 over here. Um, but then I have, I mean, Eli Lilly's always here, but Moderna I could have refreshed. But that being said, okay. Moderna, like, kind of making higher highs and higher lows. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll keep an eye on this. Volume above three mil, so not a bad look at all. So that reminds me, I want to look at Netflix. I don't know what Netflix is doing right now, but I know Netflix was a bit to the upside earlier. Okay, Netflix, I mean, I don't want to say flat bottom broke because we're up on the day. It's kind of like a Nexi situation where, mm. like, it it broke from a key support level. But we did have these higher low, or sorry, lower highs here, 474, 473. This more or less solid bottom of 471, we decidedly broke below that. Um, and it did look like, if you actually look at Netflix, it looks like it was going to be a bit of like um, a bull pennant situation that just did not materialize. And, and unlike Nexi, that eventually, you know, moved back to the upside, Netflix is kind of chilling out around 470, 50. So not much of a look here, but I wanted to look at it because a name that is positive on the day today is a name to keep an eye on because this day has been very low unless you are a small cap. So um, congrats to, yeah, congrats on that Nexi move earlier. Yeah, really it's small, not a bad look. Congrats on all those, um, all the little small caps running today. Um, what else has been? I just I want know to talk about Mara real yeah, quick if sure. I'm able go to. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so Mara, you know, I saw a lot of commentary about Mara in the chat while the big kahunas were on this morning. And, you know, this one kind of came back from the dead, guys, because Mara was really, really depressed in its value earlier. It was sub, it was almost sub 20. Let's bring in the, the chart over here and uh, talk about it. But I, right now, I have an order uh, set to trigger on MARA if it breaks a certain level, and we'll talk about that in a second. Let me just, it takes a, a minute for Mara to load up on my platform. I don't really know why, uh, but here it is. So this is the five minute look on Mara, and you can see at 7 a.m., we were just barely holding on to 20 bucks. This is a stock where we almost broke, we, we actually broke 30 bucks. We were at $32, guys, on the 27th. So this gave up almost 12 bucks in a matter of a couple of days. So it, it's quite volatile. The NOS boss is obviously printing on this one on his swing and has been for quite some time. But this is the look on Mara. Let me show you the one minute here because it's. Um, this is where I'm basing my, uh, my entry on. If we... 
Number one, we put in several lower highs here. Now, if we make a higher high through the break of this crest over here, I'm gonna get long. So I've already put my order to trigger through the break of 31, 23, 31, we'll get long on MARA. Uh, for a possible move back up, but it was a great recovery from a $20 hold this morning. If you were, uh, you know, if you were an early bird and you were up and in front of your computer at around 7, 10 a.m., you could have caught that $20 touch. I think it got down to $20.10 was the low. Let me tell you exactly. Yeah, $20.10 was the pre-market low, and it kind of almost came back to that again, uh, the uh, opening, uh, the implied balance open right at 9.30 came back into $20.39. Now we're talking a 23.67 high uh, off this big move up here at around uh, yeah, 10 to 11 or so. It really started to get going here, coming off that 22 and a quarter, moving up into 23 and two thirds. So that's a hell of a move there for a $20 name within uh, a 10 minute span. So I've, I put a resting order on MARA to take long. If we can get above this key resistance area, my out will be the break of $23, despite the fact that the trough is right here at 23, you know, let's say in two thirds, 23 and three quarters in and around that area. But I'm expecting Mara to continue to move up at least to test previous uh, highs at 23 and two thirds if it can break above this key resistance zone over here, which is, uh, which would be a new higher high. But if we continue to reject that 2330, then I won't get involved in this name until uh, we can see some more strength on MARA, but great look today. And it's been a great look for this, uh, for this name for, for quite a while. I mean, I looked at this uh, year to date move last year. It was like 600% or something crazy like that. So yeah, for last year. So we'll have to see if we get filled on MARA, but there's clearly a seller here. You can see on the book at 30, and every time we come around into that 30 area, we are rejecting, but for how long, we'll have to wait and see. Resting orders in place there. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good look, and um, yeah, I think no, that makes sense, that, that area, because that was a really strong area of um, resistance or support earlier. I think, too, Tesla just broke above, I am seeing some mention of Tesla in the chat, shout out to Renata here. Um, Tesla just broke 240 and then kind of dipped back below. Like I said, Tesla decisively breaking VWAP is of interest to me. Then if we go back and do another dip, I could do a dip buy. And I say that even though we are down on the day because higher high, higher low. Um, continuing. Um, I'm interested. I am intrigued. I am enticed. I am, insert word here, I do like the look that we're seeing <laughs> on Tesla. Also, Eli Lilly looks like we, we made a new high. It looks like we're ready to dip back. So I am like a little shark hungry at the water for, for Eli Lilly um, to kind of have this, this dip by opportunity here. I, I just kind of want to range play this, um, kind of get in at the dip, get out at the top. If we continue doing that, I'm interested. Um, IK saying, oh, I made 400 in the Lilly. Thank you. Uh, no need to thank me. Congratulations to you. Eli Lilly um, has treated you very nicely. I, I've just, I, I was gonna say she's not treated me very nicely, but I also have not been at my strongest today trading. I'm gonna be really honest about that. So um, yeah, there we go. Um, what, yeah, Tesla's still hanging out um, at, at 240, so nothing before there. Someone just said, tes check Tesla in the chat, but yeah, not, not doing too well, much. Well, Apple just made just a, a new low of day, Ooh, era. Apple. Yep, AAPL. Let's look at Apple. Um, well, apparently, but yeah, this one um, made its largest um, one-day move to the downside since oh. September yesterday when we moved down. We closed 3.6% to the downside, seven week, touching seven-week lows after um, that Barclays downgrade that Sharif was mentioning earlier, too. Barclays was a little bit concerned about the iPhone demand and sales heading into iPhone 16 era. But yeah, so I mean, Apple, Apple, okay, let me look. Why have I not, I've not been giving Apple any TLC. And yet I kind of like the look of Apple. This flat bottom is interesting. This 183, more or less flat bottom around 183. Um, so if we break yeah. that, that could be interesting. And lower highs. Yes, exactly. So maybe it looks we're like flat a bottom breaking. Wedge. Yeah, yeah, I like exactly. the descending wedgeness of it. I like how it starts off. Yeah. Well, it's like sharp. Oh, I just, I literally stabbed myself with my nail there. But it's like <laughs> sharp, like it's like, and then um, it's a really good animation. Yeah, it is. It's one of uh, Chilean Nightmare's better ones. But yeah, I like, um, this. I like Apple here. They're all good. I'm sorry, Fabian. <laughs> it's just I guess I have an affinity for that one because I like flat turn. bottom break. Yeah. Right? Uh, all right. Where did you find this? Says uh, Tim is in. 
I'm not sure what uh, you're talking about, Tim. Uh, let me know if you're talking to us, and maybe you're talking to somebody in the chat. But yeah, Apple uh, continuing to head to the downside, guys. And you know, this is uh, look. I, I heard a lot of different takes on some of the pods that I listened to about what was going on. You know, uh, some money repositioning, big money repositioning, and some names. So getting out of some mega cap names to get into some uh, mid cap or small cap names. We've been hearing a lot about rotation. That could be it another thing could be why would you want to pay taxes on some of your profits if you were in the money on some of these mega cap names in 2023 when you can kick the can down the road into 2024 google time value of money you'll know exactly what i'm talking about so there is uh, like several reasons why we've been having this week start in to 2024, whether or not that lasts, your guess, your guess is as good as mine. But uh, Apple paying uh, the you know paying the most right now, bearing the brunt of this uh, this mega cap downturn, uh, at least initially, uh, down the most I would say out of the seven over the, over the past few days. So we'll see, we'll see what this one does. But yeah, be on the lookout here for that flat bottom to break. I mean, I wouldn't be so quick to want to buy the dips. It looks like people are buying the dips though. Bouncing off that 183.43 bound now into the 183 high 60s, you know, until I see a higher high, which we really haven't seen on Apple in the last couple of days, I'm not inclined at all to want to punch long green candles or not uh, right now. But it's going to have to prove to me that the trend has changed. And so far, you know, it's quite obvious the trend hasn't. So possible, you know, descending wedge here on AAPL with lower highs and a flat top pardon me, flat bottom, um, and the trend that preceded it is a downtrend, so it would make, uh, it would make sense here that this pattern you know, manifests and we eventually get that 183.5 decided break rather than a couple of perfunctory wicks below 183.5. So we'll have to see what we get on Apple. Uh, the strong one, though, like we mentioned at the top of the show, Adair and I, is Google continuing to print to the high side here. Higher lows, not necessarily higher highs, though, on GOOGL. This one is finding resistance uh, just a smidge below that 139 area at 138.95, but the higher lows are telling, and it's holding that 10 EMA quite well. The other one that's just awakening here is TSLA. So this one, and a lot of people have been talking about Tesla. Yes, Diamond Realty Miami. I see you, baby. I see you. He's like, Tesla is making the move up, and yes, sir, it is. So we quadumed for whatever reason off yesterday's previous close, which was 248 and a half. We got all the way down to 236 and a third. So giving up a lot of money there for really no news catalyst on Tesla. And they beat expectations with respect to deliveries after two misses in a row. So you think that that would be a positive catalyst, but that, that wouldn't really matter if the reason we're selling off is one of the preceding reasons that I mentioned, big money repositioning or tax loss, or not even tax loss, um, basically uh, kicking down the road, kicking the can down the road with respect to, uh, to profits on some, of these, uh, on some of these mega cap names that were up big in 2023. They, you want to pay tax for that in 2024, you cash out in 2024. So we'll have to wait and see 241, uh, a level here on TSLA. It also happens to be S2 if you're using pivot points. Um, the pivot point on Tesla is that 248 level with S1 at 244.5 and, and S2 at 241, just a little bit above 241. So we could find some resistance here. We are above VWAP on Tesla, breaking through that 240. We'll have to see how high we get but it is not a bad look so far on Tesla. Recovering a little bit, still down the most out of all the MAG-7, Adara, 3.12%, taking it on the chin. Yeah, Tesla is in for a bit, a bit of a rough time. Yeah, we fell yesterday, too, off those actually strong delivery numbers. I know Rivian had rougher delivery numbers. Let's look at Rivian. And yet Rivian, I think, fell, but not to the extent of Tesla. Now they're, I guess, down about the same amount now. Rivian also having quite the recovery. I like I like this V-shaped retracement, but like, you know, a reverse V. If we can, um, if we can get this um, 2050, because that was the area from where we really fell from grace. So if we can get that 2050 and we can truck it to the upside, pun very intended, I'd probably take some profit around 2080, so that'd be about 20 cents, because that would be where we had a bit of chop and turn earlier, and I would want to be out by that point. Um, Joseph saying um, Tesla is going down 
because oh. it's reached a sell signal from a technical perspective. There's also the concern that BYD is overtaking Tesla in sales. That I was okay. Aware of the BYD so here's thing. the I, I saw a lot of misleading uh, infographics. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Yahoo Finance, um, with respect <laughs> to that Tesla move yesterday. We know for sure that BYD makes more cars than Tesla. That is misleading. They don't make more electric vehicles than Tesla. They make more hybrids and electric vehicles combined. It is not hard to scale elect, um, hybrid vehicles because of the engine, the ICE engine component. You only need a, a, like a minute amount of the battery that you need in a full EV. It's really how many EVs, pure EVs, can BYD deliver versus Tesla. And they're about 250,000 short of Tesla, 1.6 million for BYD on the year, 1.85 million for Tesla on the year. So uh, this is nonsensical, okay? It's like comparing the amount of cars GM delivers to what Tesla delivers. They're not in the same camp, all right? You gotta compare apples to apples. It's EVs to EVs. Stop making up stuff. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant no, here, but I, it was I just so you misleading. Yahoo, Bennett, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I wasn't even aware of the, the ratio of um, the um, the hybrids to EVs until you just put it out there. So I do think the world has been, I'm not going to say actively misled, but I think there is sort of a weird interpretation of data there because I yeah, people was like, oh, BYD is like, I thought they only did EVs the way we were no. talking. I thought they were like another Neo. So they don't make or... any more internal combustion engines. They okay. only make hybrids and EVs. I'm talking about BYD. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so they're, make, they're called new energy vehicles. Right, so whatever. there we go. So it's in the realm of EV. It's not exclusively exactly. an EV like a Neo exactly. or a Lee or um, shout out to you. Yeah. Lee well, Lee, no, no. X Lee's new energy as well because they oh. have like uh, an engine. Um, it's a generator and it okay. charges the electric vehicle, uh, the electric uh, motor on board. Okay. It, the electric motor on its own can do about 250 kilometers. And then with that added engine, you can do about 1,350. Yeah. I'm but learning look, a lot today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lee's not pure EV either. Okay. Let's be let's be honest about yeah. it. Uh, but the, the real, look, and I'm not disrespecting BYD. You know I've talked to everybody here on the desk about the fact that I like BYD. Yeah, it's a I monster. Yeah, you like BYD. It's a, it's a yeah. heavyweight, okay? But the fact of the matter is they're not outperforming Tesla. Tesla's still king you know what uh, when it comes to EV production. Yeah. Well, because Tesla does exclusively EV, correct me if I'm wrong, but that, that's Tesla's Only. whole Never move. made yeah. ice. Never made anything other than electric vehicles. Yeah. yeah. So Tesla is still king dog. All right, guys, AISP. I'm being told uh, by a, a gentleman in the chat that this one is pumping, and that gentleman is right. Sorry, I forgot your name. AISP, 54% really started out its life here at around 11.30. It was kind of dead money prior to that. Then all of a sudden, the volume, as you can see right down here, bottom right on your screen, started screaming in. And AISP now has done five and a third million shares. Its average volume is one, so we're already five times above average volume. The last five minutes alone on AISP, we've done over a million shares. So this one, we're really starting to pump in here and uh, catch a move. Now, wh why is this moving up? I'm looking on my blotter to see what's up with this one, and I don't see any entries from today. Me um, do I see anything from yesterday? So AISP is called Airship AI Holdings. And I did get something yesterday, Adara, on the second. Victor Huang, is he related to Jensen? Uh, reports, I'm kidding, of course, right? 25.7% <laughs> uh, stake in Airship AI Holdings as of December 21st, 2023, uh, as per an SEC filing. I'm not sure who Victor Huang is, no disrespect to him, but clearly he's important enough here that uh, Reuters want to report on his uh, new holding. That was yesterday. I'm not sure if this is a continuation from yesterday's move. Let's look at AISP's daily chart here. Um, and figure out what's up. Also, so, um, yeah, the person for in the chat, Nader, saying uh, government contracts is what's moving in. Ah, okay, well, I don't actually see I'm that here. Either, I'm not yeah. seeing that, but thank you. Uh, what's his name? Nader? Okay. Um, thank you for letting us know. Here is the daily look on AISP. So let's see if this is this bad boy is a former runner. Remember when we talked about former runners oh, yeah. yesterday, Adair? All right, so here it is. This one clearly a SPAC. Can you tell how, can you, can you tell how I guessed that it's a SPAC? That was previously a SPAC, or if it's not already. Right. Okay, so, so I'm I'm kind of yeah, putting you on I'm a little learning bit. That's I don't fine. know much. About, I, That's like, cool. I know what they are, but I don't know as much about how they move. So special purpose acquisition companies will trade in and around ten dollars until they de-SPAC. 
Okay. So that's how you can tell it's a spy. Yeah, look okay. how long it was holding 10 bucks for and that's not crazy. moving up. Just like, you know, barely. Like, look at this day, for example. It shoots up to 13 bucks, and then the next day it comes right back into 10 So anytime you see a stock trading and holding $10 for a prolonged period of time, you almost know for a fact that it was previously a SPAC. This that's one really cool. has de spacked right? It de spacked means that it merged with a company. Yeah, so it's not a SPAC anymore. Now it's exactly. its own company. Exactly. That was what Chamath did, right? The SPACs? Like, that, yeah, that was that Chamath's was whole thing, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, they held that against him because SPAC is a little bit of a suspect vehicle coming to market. But we're, we're not going to get into that. No, um, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. No, you're bang on. So this one, obviously, de spac It is a former runner. Uh, back on December 15th, this one shot up into 26 bucks, but it was kind of like, you know, a... You know, not really a good thing because then it started trending right back down. Today, getting uh, the first green candle in here in how many how many days? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the eighth day, we finally get a green can green candle. Uh, there is really kind of no resistance level to say, okay, you know, here we're going to expect a lot of selling because of the stair step down, the incremental uh, nature of its move down. There is just so many different levels that we have to concern ourselves with on AISP. So let's just trade the price action here. Let's see what happens. But Great move, uh, midday move, you know, coming in at 12 o'clock, 1130, uh, keeping things interesting here up to $2.75. Now that we've looked at the uh, chart, let's look at the book, okay? So it is a little spready for a $2 name, three, four pennies at times. Right now it's tight. It's at one penny, but it opens up, yeah, just opened up again. So be careful on this one. It has a tendency to make aggressive moves. What the hell is going on with my chart? Uh, a tendency to make aggressive moves both up and down, but uh, let's see what this one does at the whole dollar area if we're able to take three a dare. Yeah, no, I think that that's an interesting look for sure. And it's interesting how many of these small caps today have been midday movers because we have a lot of small cap gappers, but these ones are like low midday. Mm. We'll call them midday movers, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Because they, instead of. <laughs> you know of what having... the name of the show used to be before midday? No. It used to be memes and movers. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then they changed it from memes and movers to middays because like the meme stocks like kind of ran out of oh, favor. Oh, yeah. Like the AMCs and yeah. GMCs and stuff. That's like so that. yeah. Wait, so is it still like three hours of memes and mm -hmm. movers? That's so cute. Okay, mm -hmm. I like that. Yep. I mean, now now we, you know, we, we I guess there's less meme stocks moving, but yep. that's, I mean, there are movers sometimes, right? Also, yeah. shout out to um, For Profit in the chat here. All right, midday and chill. Yeah, I mean, not, midday's not doing too much right now, so. Um, I did get back into Eli Lilly, and I, I got in here because we're, we're kind of holding this 611 area pretty well. I got in a little bit higher than that, but I was trying to look because we, we've been making higher highs and higher lows, Ooh. and we're up 3.5%, no, three, three and a third percent, 320. Three the point is we're, we're up on the day of over 3%, even though apparently I cannot like say percentages properly today. But yeah, so I like the look of this. Profit taking is probably going to be partially around the 613 because 613 has been an area for Eli Lilly today. Mm. If I keep a piece of the dream, shout out to Sharif, it'll go to 614. But yeah, I do think we can we can kind of um, get up here. We've had a lot of strength here at 611, but you know me, I'm going to be watching the tape as well. If the tape tells me something else, we're going to have to switch the beat, turn the beat around here. Um, shout out to the band that does that song because I do not remember, but it's from the 80s. So there we go. Um, Saad saying, careful, never like the falling knife trade. Yeah, that honestly did worry me a little bit here with Eli Lilly. The reason I did get in here, though, is because we have had higher highs, higher lows. So I, I'm going to keep that in mind, though. I appreciate you saying that, because the second I got in, I was like, this looks really rough when I actually just look at where I entered. Okay. But, um, but we're holding up at 611. So we're going to hopefully, hopefully um, try out here. Okay. Um, but yes, that, that's what's happening right now. NVIDIA still doing a very interesting, um, I was going to say dance, but it's not really dancing. It's tiptoeing. It's, it's like do it, it's on point here around VWAP, NVIDIA. Um, making lower highs, um, hanging out at VWAP. The other, so VWAP, this um, 477 is a really interesting area for VWAP. The other interesting area support for, um, sorry, for NVIDIA, the, uh, not for VWAP. The other interesting area for NVIDIA is um, 474 because this is where we really had that that you know that strong support area earlier today. I was talking to Sharif about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Nvidia 477 also seems to be kind of a, an interesting support area. I don't want to say flat bottom breaking because we're down in the day, but this is not like the lowest it's been. But Nvidia seems to definitely be having this general trend of lower highs, 
flat bottoms. Um, on the more macro scale, it's the 473. On the more micro, it's 477. Either way, I'm just keeping an eye on it. I don't want to make any assumptions because that's what led me to this unfortunate situation earlier today. Mm. LJD asking, what's a Dara specialization? Um, I am very new to trading, so I don't want to put myself in a little teeny pigeonhole box, but I like to do a thing I call scopulation. <laughs> I was just about to say it. I was going to say it on Yeah, I can tell you were going to say it. I like to figure out. I took the word. <laughs> but so basically what I do is I like being scalpier. Um, yeah, it's a, well, I love the scalp definition. Thank you, Fabian, for putting that there in the little bottom there. But I know there's one for fat finger as well, which I really enjoy. But yeah, so scalp, basically, um, I, I like to take kind of smaller moves, usually for the most part, and I like to use a combination of what I'm seeing on the chart and what I'm seeing on the tape. Um, Look what Bears versus Bulls oh, said. Oh, that was so funny. Um, Bears versus Bulls <laughs> saying my specialization, specialization is puns. <laughs> Definitely puns. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, you can specialize in more than one thing. Right, it can be scalculation and puns. Yeah, yeah I, can do both. I mean, scalculation is in itself a weird kind of pun. <laughs> Maybe in his opinions. No, no, I'm joking. But yeah, Eli Lilly still. Um, Adara, the, still uh, the, the Qs moment. are at days lows now. Oh, eh? yeah. I was the gonna... NQ or the Qs, whatever your yeah. uh, inclination. We are at days lows, guys. Uh, Let's bring in Ooh. the chart on the future here as we are now down another percentage point on the NASDAQ. We lost a bunch yesterday and we're losing more today. Lower highs, lower lows coming into that earlier resistance point. Or sorry, support level at 16,550. Uh, you know, we did get a perfunctory break below it to 544, but the closing prints all at 550. And here we are again now at testing that level again, moving right back down. The dotted line, in case you're wondering, is S1, support level one, using pivot points on my chart. So you'll see the pivot point today on the future is 16,794, just a smidge below 16,8. And then support level one is at 16,550. Recall from our lesson on pivot points, the current day's distance between say pivot point resistance level one resistance level two support level one support level two is all dictated by the previous day's price action because in order to calculate the pivot point which is the green dotted line on my chart you need the high the low and the close from the previous day if there is a big gap a distance between that high the low and the close you're going to have a wider pivot point range for today, whereas you could have had a tighter one yesterday. Case in point, look at this. Look how close the pivot point yesterday, which was at 17.0 and a third, is to support level one, which is at just a, a little bit below 16.9 uh, 16, and a third. Look how far they are today because yesterday's range was so big to the downside, so today's pivot point range is dictated by that. But... Um, Basically, to go back into that key level of resistance, 16,550, we are getting uh, some support at it now, which happens to be support level one as well, as it, as um, in addition to the previous uh, trough there on uh, on the future. So keeping an eye on the future. Um, the other one I want to talk about quickly before I go back in uh, tomorrow, because Mara, I wanted to mention again that I had a trade set up on that. Um, Tesla did get a bit of a bounce off that 236 and a third coming back into 241, but it did reject off support level two, which is the orange dotted line on my chart, or the 50 period moving average. Take your pick. It's nice when there's confluence between them, <laughs> right? Between the two levels there where pivot point where support level two and the 50 period are um, overlapping at the same area. But a big move down here on Tesla now. Again, below VWAP, so the higher lows and higher highs still intact. We haven't made a newer low. The newer low would come vis-a-vis -a, -vis a 238 break. If we broke 238, that would be a newer low, and the trend, the uptrend would not be intact. But I got to tell you, it feels like a dead cap bounce on any of these Mag7 big tech mega cap, mega cap names or whatever. Uh, anytime they're popping right back, uh, popping up, it feels like they're just going to huadunk right back down again. So uh, I would be very careful getting into long position on any of the mega cap names. Now, with respect to this Mara setup that I just alluded to, I'm looking at getting long on Mara. If we break above that 2331, I want a clearing of this clear, I want a, a breaking of this clear resistance level 
on the chart, we are putting in higher lows. So if you look at the one minute, we are putting higher low, higher low. We haven't broken the higher lows trend yet. It's the higher high trend that we need to continue. And that higher high trend has to come vis-a-vis -vis at two thirds, sorry, at 23 and two thirds break. So I like the fact that we're putting in higher lows on MARA, but in, you know, to continue the trend, we need, need that higher highs. I'm going to get in if this level here breaks at that 2331 area. I've already got my order. Let me just make sure the script is uh, still there and in good standing because sometimes scripts I, you know, they have minds of their own. Yeah. No, it's uh, still there. So I will be getting long Mara above that break and then uh, we'll see what happens from there. Saad Mahmoud. Instead of pivot points, do you guys use volume profile with value area high and low and the median pivot? It takes into account volume, so it may be better than just OHLC values. Look, you're not wrong. And when Steph was on, she talked a lot about volume profile with respect to her trading on the futures. I think it's very important to be able to use that. Sadly, I don't have that available on my platform, nor do we have it on P Pro 8, but it's something I definitely want to get into. I think it, there's a lot of value added. Thank you for pointing that out, especially to the people in the chat who don't know too much about it. Um, some, you know, just like we do every year, uh, we have New Year's resolutions, and one of my resolutions this year is to learn more about options and to incorporate more indicators uh, into my uh, into my analysis. Adira, cool Shut stuff. Up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why Brothers United Spy SPX holding right above the twenty one EMA? Scary. Yes, it is scary. But you know what else is scary? This trade already on MARA. We take that two. Sorry, that 2331 break, and all of a sudden we're in the mid 40s. Now let's look for the break of this higher high over here. Let's look for that 23 and two thirds break if it continues to head to the high side. My trading plan on this one a break of 23 to the downside. I'm out. We're going to cut that trade, but let's look for continuation on MRA. It's been a strong name as of late, Adira. Nice look. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, congrats. Good luck on that trade. It uh, looks really nice as of right now. And it's also interesting, Mara, when it came in this morning, down like more than 10%. So Mara moves, Mara's running marathons every day. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> it's a pun, but it's also the truth. I want right to look down at the daily though. chart. Yeah, I mean, literally, I stumbled <laughs> into it. Um, because, oh yeah, Mara looks so nice intraday. Though. Like, this is a really good look. But yeah, also, if I look at the daily on Mara, I love looking at the daily on Mara because. Oh my gosh, what is, like, this stock does what it wants to do. Look at the crazy wicks on this. Like, we were at 20 at our lowest point today, and our highest, like, 20, almost 27. Yeah. It does a $7 range for for this a stock that's nuts, essentially, eh? like, around $20. So it's a really interesting look here on Mara. Also, this this rounded bottom to the upside by the by the roundy face, I guess. Shout out to Michael Nock, who was here that. earlier. We forgot to mention that. Um... so sad. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I would have really enjoyed that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, Mara's really crazy. Like, the, the movements this one makes on, in a day are insane. Um, very good look there right now. Also, Eli Lilly, because I'm in that trade right now, not much to report other than we're more or less bouncing around my point of entry. I'm trying to be patient. Just hanging out. But yeah, I mean, keeping an eye on the tape here, because if this one falls, it will fall with a vengeance and stab me. It'll be like the falling knife, but it'll just like be a bad time. So there we go. I'm just keeping an eye on, on that one. Um, Tesla actually kind of continuing to, to form interesting dips. So I haven't given, I haven't taken a ride in the Cybertruck um, yet today, so I might have to hop in. Tesla hanging out near VWAP on a dip by. This actually looks really good around 240 because I know we can get to at least 240.60. That's at least 60 cents. Um, I like having the plan trade. So yeah, okay. I, I think Tesla decided that it would rather speed off without me. That's fine. But keeping an eye out. There are more dips. There are more opportunities. I don't want to get so stuck in my ways. I've traded two stocks today and it's not been like I said earlier. You know, I want to be really open. A, I'm still in the sim too, just that. But I'm just not my best trading day, trying to learn and see what's happening. How is Mara going? It's not bad. It's about a few pennies in the money, but you know, not moving with this with the type of velocity that I would ideally want, but I don't get to dictate that. So we're gonna have to pack our patience here on MARA as it does that little dance with that with the key resistance level. All right, back in the 40s. All right, cool. We got a beak wetter there at 45, so maybe that'll trigger. Come on. All right, we'll have to wait there uh, on it. All right, I thought it was going to trigger. But I want to mention AISP. 
Nader, thank you for pointing this out in the chat. But this is the risk you take when you trade these small cap gappers. This is a topping tail candle if I've ever seen one. Oof. It's typically a reversal candle. It's better shown on the five minute chart here. This is it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not an ideal look. I mean, let's be honest about it. Uh, especially since it rejected right at that $3 level. $2.99 is the high. Now we're back down at the 257. Possible level of support here. Not saying I'm gonna take this trade, but possible level of support, that 241-ish area, which is where, at, where VWAP is. And VWAP has factored into this, uh, into this name today. All the dip buys initially on the move up did hold up at VWAP as their key support level. So I wonder if that kind of recycles uh, today where we do get a dip off VWAP, but this is an ugly, ugly candle. Um, you know, anytime you see this, you know shorts are definitely getting in around here, especially at that whole dollar level. Uh, these topping tail candles are, are just a dead giveaway of, yeah, of shorts, at especially at the, the whole dollar level. And I'm repeating myself, but I'm just thinking, here as I talk, yeah, AISP, rejecting now. Keep your eye on VWAP, though, for a possible uh, interesting trade uh, there. Uh, we'll, we're going to keep AISP on the trading uh, screen in case uh, anything comes of it. All right, nice. Uh, a second beak wetter here on MARA at 45. Stair-stepping up incrementally, but nothing to celebrate on Mara. De-risking here, long 31s, looking for a test. Adara of this two thirds area, 23 and two thirds. Ooh. We're looking for a break of that level. We need the higher high, higher low uh, trend to continue. We have the higher low trend. There's no uh, lower lows here, so it's great. But the higher highs is kind of what's in question at the moment, whether or not we can get into that 23 and two thirds. We're gonna chill. Nedder already made 5K. Shout out to you, my man. We're gonna spend the money for you, Nedder. But uh, yeah, just, you know, not everybody's gonna be able to profit off these uh, small cap gappers as well as you. And so what we try to do is try to, ex uh, you know, advocate some caution so that people don't blow up their accounts and then, you know, they can join us the next day. But if you blow up your account, you're probably gonna have a bitter taste in your mouth and you're not gonna join us and that's not good for us, not good for you. So that's why we try to, you know, stress some caution. But no disrespect to your trading. Uh, you're obviously doing well for yourself there. Shout out to you, my man. Yeah, congratulations there. Also, I have a question. So, because I was thinking about this is the top and tail candle. Also yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier. I'm going to find a way to word this. Go but for so it. So I guess what I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the dead cat bounce is usually characterized by a stock kind of falls to a point and then it bounces up afterwards, right? Is that the dead cat bounce? Can you say that again? Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Well, a dead cat bounce is like, you know, when there is just like some relief buying, okay. but there is no sustained buying. So okay. it's like a quick bounce and then you continue down. So you put in that lower high. Okay, I see. Yeah. So it, it, you're basically just capitalizing on the lower high. Exactly. So it, it, I guess what I'm trying to say is then for, for if you're planning, like if you're going to trade one of those and you're planning profit takers, you're definitely like, you, you have to kind of plan it with the, the thought it's still going to be lower high, I guess, right? Because you're not going to get like a higher high. I'm trying to find a way to... Well, buy. I wouldn't be involved in... I like I. I personally like wouldn't get into AISP. Like, are you yeah. talking about AISP I right guess, here? yeah, I was just curious okay. in general, yeah, with the whole, like, dead cat bounce. Kind so of this move. is not a dead cat bounce. Um, I, I didn't mean dead cat bounce. Oh, sorry, I sorry. some of the, um, the earlier, tails. yeah, I know some of the, the mega caps earlier. Uh, that was kind of, I, 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 okay. I, I think it was late to ask the question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the reason I was theorizing or hypothesizing it's a dead cat bounce is because we're number one, we're getting shellacked on uh, all the Meg 7, yeah. including the Fuge. So unless I see something that's gonna tell me, okay, the trend's changed, right? We're not making lower highs and lower lows anymore. I'm gonna assume it's a dead cap bounce. That on a sense. bounce, on a move back up. That's kind of what I mean by okay. that. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's, Thank you, I appreciate uh, that. Absolutely. All right, here we go on MARA. We're breaking through 50s. Oh, baby. Uh, Mara continuing to pump to the high side here. We're still looking for that uh, 23 and two thirds break. We're gonna, we're gonna put a beak wetter there. Big Patty Ice, your Mar is moving, baby. Where's Big Patty Ice? No, he's, he's not, not here. Yeah, shout out to Big Patty Ice, because you know that's all he trades, baby. He's he's known. He's the he's the marathon the world. man. Yeah, yeah, here you go. Uh, all right, guys, moving up nicely here on MARA, and uh, please the sponges of Dara likes to say. So let's let this one run and see if we can uh, continue to extract some more money off this bad boy. Indeed. Um, some uh, robot M R C S mems in the chat. Roblox bounce. Roblox bounce. Let's, let, not not one block, but all blocks. <laughs> R B L X. Yeah, I mean, 
I think, yeah, I think, I, I see what you mean. Well, I think what makes me, I guess, a little bit less enthusiastic about a potential bounce is that, this one, you know what this actually kind of looks like the NVIDIA chart, which is which is really interesting, but you have, and why I say it looks like the NVIDIA chart is you have a really flat, um, clear flat bottom. Here in this case, it's about 4150. We have some obvious consolidation that happens to be around VWAP, this 42.1 area. What I do like though for a potential Roblox bounce is um, support becoming, or resistance becoming support, right? This is a huge thing that um, I, I've learned a lot through like, you know, Sharif pointing it out to me, so thank you so much. But like 42.1 was definitely a resistance area for Roblox once and twice earlier today in pre-market and then during the session. And then now we've come to find 42.1 as some support. So I do like the look of that. I think if we were to bounce, I would say it would be off that 42.1. But yeah, generally though, we are down on the day and we're making um, higher low, lower highs. So I would put that out there in general for Roblox. That being said, I do not think it's a bad look at all um, for a potential bounce. I'm just, I think if it were to bounce, it'd be off that 42.1. But like, you know, just kind of contextualizing it with we're extremely down on the day, on a day where the market is a little bit lower too. Yes, ma'am. Um, Greg Newman mentioning SoFi. SoFi was on the watch list today because it had a downgrade from Keith Bruyette and Woods, which is a name that I always struggle to say. Um, ooh, SoFi, hello. This flat bottom is really interesting. Are we, we could do a Whoa. roundy face from here. We there, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. I don't want to make any assumptions this here. Is down 14 percent. Yeah, the downgrade. Oh the, it, it's almost the price target was um the new price target six and a half, seven and a half to six and a half. They Gosh. downgrade. Yeah, it, it's it's not a great look for SoFi. But I have to say, yeah, um, Greg Newman saying, is it ready to bubble up? I would have to see. I, I think the support at eight third. 8.30 is definitely interesting. I would not, for myself, I wouldn't make any assumptions. Again, not advice, but just, you know, my reading of the chart. We are down 14%, though. That's the thing. Like, as Sharif said, like, any move to the upside yeah. here, you have to contextualize this with we are down 14%. Yes. So I'd say it might be too early to predict that rounding bottom. Yeah, I agree. That's why I said, like, I, I said it looks like it could be, but I don't want to say anything just yet. Um, because, honestly, if you're down this low, who says we cannot go lower? Also, Eli Lilly continuing to bake here. Um... I don't know why I made a weird cake analysis. This is a medical <laughs> company. You looked at me so confused. Yeah, I'm like, did she say bake? I did say bake. I was I like did so confused. Yeah, through. it's all good. It's, um, it's not an easy bake oven. It is a, a, a biomed stock. Okay, okay. But yeah, I mean, uh, I guess the, the dosage is working. I'll say that. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I had, to, I, had to, I had to make up for it. So I'm, I'm trying to get out of... Um, that 613, like I said, I have part of my position set to leave at 613. Not too many shares, just trying to take it slow and steady wins the race. There you go. Um, but yeah, a little, little bit more than 50 cents in right now. Pleased as punch. Nice. Um, there we go. All right, Please. let's take care of some housekeeping let's stuff, guys, as we typically do around here. Um, there's no, um, nothing to report with respect to auctions or Fed speakers. Uh, that has already taken, uh, that's already happened. Fed Barkin, you guys know that was on at 8.30, talking about a, a, like a more likely scenario for soft landing, but saying it's not guaranteed, uh, which seemed to be a bit you know, more positive on the market. We definitely had, um, as Adara brought to you earlier, the, job, the Jolts jobs opening at 10 o'clock, the ISM manufacturing PMI, that all came in at 10 a.m. today. What's left on the day is as follows. The Atlanta Fed GDP now, which we don't cover typically on the show. Investing.com gives it two bulls at a three in importance. And then at 2 o'clock, we have the FOMC minutes. That gets three bulls at a three in importance. I've had my reservations about the minutes uh, for a little bit because it's kind of lagging, right? We already know what has happened since the time these minutes were released at their last meeting, or not released, were dr drafted, they're released today, uh, at the last meeting. And so many intervening things have happened since that time. I wonder about their relevance. I could be wrong. It still gives insight, I guess, into the, into the minds of the Fed speakers who haven't taken to the air and given interviews like Barkin and some of the other um, members as well. So, yeah, it's there, and we're going to get it at 2 o'clock. Typically, we get, you know, sometimes there's an algo reaction. The algos are able to read all this stuff way quicker than a human can read it, and they typically react uh, way quicker as well. And so, you know, you'll get a spike up, spike down, whatever it is. 
Uh, there'll be some sort of market reaction typically at two o'clock. I just don't know how sustained of a reaction it's going to be, but there will be an algo spike up or down. Um, let's go back to MARA here. We have a, a several beak wetters at one is at 69 and the other at 74. Uh, we're long at 31s. These are the outs so far. We're looking for continuation. We did break above that key resistance level at two thirds that I talked about. And this is the level that I was meaning earlier, but we had a perfunctory break of it. We're right back there again at 61, 62s here. We're looking for a decided break through that level probably into 24 if I if you know if I really had my uh, my pick here to see if we can get into that whole dollar level but it's nice to be printing those higher lows now we just need that decided higher high not by one or two pennies we want a decided higher high clear it by 10 15 pennies show me that the buyers are overwhelming sellers at that level we're having some trouble here at the two-thirds area to be expected we did have trouble with it over here and we're having trouble with it again we're getting into two-thirds and then we're selling off we're getting into two-thirds we're selling off so I'm trying to pack my patience and keeping in the back of my mind that the lower that the higher lows pattern is in place here so knowing that Knowing that means that the buyers are overwhelming sellers at every incremental level, just not maybe on the micro, but on the macro. So we'll have to wait and see whether we get that move up through two thirds. But right now we're definitely having trouble with it here. AJ says Mara might be a double top. Very good point, AJ. You're absolutely right. Let's bring in the side chart here to explain what AJ's talking about. Let's bring in, uh, where's my Mara chart over here? All right, I'm going to have to get rid of one of these. LBPH, you're out, baby. It's the end it's of your been, life. It's been, it's been nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to know you. Nice to know you. Um, See you next time you run. Give it a second here to load for whatever reason. Mara always takes forever. And this is what um, this is what AJ is talking about over here on MARA. We're right back at that key resistance level. We're going to need to clear it, right, in order for us to say, look, the trend is still intact. We're still that upward channel. We that upward channel requires two things: higher highs and higher lows. And so if we don't get that higher high through a decided break of that 23 and two thirds. This could absolutely be a double top. But Adara, test for you. How do we know the double top has manifested? What level are we waiting for to break here to say, okay, the double top is in play? We would need to break a lower low. Right? And what is that lower low? Um, on Mara, sorry for awkwardly zooming in. Is it 22.75? Oh, remix. Oh my God. Bang on, Adara. Thank you. Good for you. Thank you so Killed much. it there. And you were on under pressure and everything. The Chilean nightmare is showing you love over there. Thank you, go. you very much. Yeah. Bang on. So in order for us really to say the double top has broken here, we're going to have to break the neckline, which is at 2275. It gives us a good move. I mean, if your theory is that we're going to at least move into here, this, uh, you know, the top end of this resistance range, 21 and a quarter, that gives you plenty of move to the downside. That's about $1.50 here that you could get to the downside while you'll have to risk about a dollar because well the top end is that two thirds three quarters so we'll have to wait and see whether this ends up being a double top but shout out to you aj for picking up on that let's not guess it's going to be a double top let's wait let's participate not anticipate as uh, greg like said and he was here by the way yes i saw i see? looked out of the corner of have you met him before? i've never you met had him never met him before. okay okay no like yeah, i know he here. who he is and i heard him like talking to sean and neil but i've never like been like you know i've never met him no yeah yeah he was here and it was great to see him man i gotta tell you the truth so cool yeah, yeah. top voip have a look at bitcoin etf bitto and do you have any eyes on any related btc etf I don't, I'm waiting for the spot ETF to get possibly approved. Um, the date uh, being spoken about by some commentators is January 10th. We'll have to wait to see. I know that we have BITO. I know that there is an actually a spot ETF in Toronto. It's, I just forget the ticker. It's on the TSX exchange. Uh, obviously, Americans are free to trade that as well, but you'll have to have uh, data access into Toronto. I forget what it is. The big kahunas aren't here. I think they're in a meeting. I'll check with them when they get back. Bitto is really the only one I've got my eye on. Let's have a look at BITO for you over here. All right, what are we gonna what are we gonna change? Well, we can bring back Sidhu later. BITO. Let's see what this one's up to. So let's go to the daily first and foremost, and let's load up um, the data on this. There we go. So Bitto is getting shellacked today, down four and a half percent. Take off these pivot points because they're distorting the chart. 
It makes it look like a fuzzy sweater. It's nuts, eh? But it's all zoomed out. Yeah, I just, like, how I have to keep taking it off. Yeah, um, sucks. yeah so Bido on the year. Let's start with January 2023. We started our life around 10 bucks, and now we are, we got up into 22 bucks today. The price is just below that $21 area at $20.89. We're trading at right now. Let's look at the 15 minute chart, see what kind of trend we have. We have big uh, gap up. You'll see here from the 29th onto the second, that was a huge gap up as Bitcoin was running over uh, the um, holiday long weekend there. But we've since moved down, kind of filling that entire gap. So, and the, the expression gap get, gaps get filled absolutely got filled this time around here as uh, you know that closing price on the 29th, the last trading day of the year, was at 2060, and we've already broken that and then some, at least in the pre-market anyway, but all the closing prints are around that 20 and a half. So Bido holding that support level, which is good, because it held uh, the support level that we made on the 29th and gapped up a little bit over here. It probably will encounter resistance at this level over here, which is that $21 area, 21 and a quarter. That takes us back into the high end range of the 29. So I'll have to see how Bido does, but the gap closure here uh, is interesting. But what I do like most about this gap closure is that the bottom end of the range definitely held up as an area of support, even though we're down four and three quarter percent of the day. Uh, overall, it is still a bullish look on BITO. Maybe just not on the day. All right, Mara's coming down here, and uh, we're we're yeah we're still you know well in the money, yeah. but it is coming down. So we're gonna have to we have to get this one out as it breaks down through my level over here, uh, through that 23 and a third. We'll look to possibly let's zoom out a little bit here and see where an interesting area would be. Let's see what it does at that $23 area. If it comes back into 23 and holds above that 23, that would be a higher low and that would give me a better cost basis for this bad boy. But for the moment, the we didn't get that higher high. So that double top that AJ was talking about, a distinct possibility here. Let's not guess, let's, let's participate, not anticipate. Mara, I'm out, but it's a profitable trade. Yeah, um, no, I think congratulations on that trade. Yeah, that's a good, I like Thank all the you. little beak wetters there on the way to the upside. Yes, ma'am. Um, and uh, but for now, I would like to, um, you know, shout out Benzinga Pro, which we are brought to you by, um, if you sign up today, for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders. You can do so with um, the code TTV, capital letters. That is TTV, capital letters. I feel like an infomercial lady from the early 2000s. Um, but yeah, just use the link in the description to go to check out. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Are you messaging me from her account? Yeah, I was like, bro, why are you watching this show? The Chilean nightmare was messaging me from Ram Ram's account. So I thought Ram Ram was off and watching the show. I'm like, what is she doing? She wants to know the stock tip. Yeah, no, the, the Chilean Nightmare was mes messaging me the BTC, BTCC.U. Oh. Possibly is that Bitcoin ETF I was talking about on the uh, Toronto Stock Exchange. Thank you, Fabian, for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you always to Benzinga. <laughs> look, you can look at all the different stocks, see what's moving. Tesla. Tesla Model Y dominates in Norway, apparently. The country hits 82% electric vehicle market share, which is interesting because they actually have all the, the beef going on with um, the uh, Scandinavian unions right now as well with um, some of the labor-related uh, issues. Apparently, Yeah, so I think it's kind of interesting. I think I read about this earlier yesterday as well, but I guess this is a more detailed look at that. I know Tesla did quite well in Norway for 2023, so kind of an interesting one there. But thank you very much to Benzinga for giving us all of that interesting info. Uh, really use it a lot when I form the watch list, which is also, I think, kind of apropos because we've been talking about watch lists all week. Also, in terms of just things I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on, I have Meta up here now, and I've, I've actually already marked out why I'm interested in Meta. This looks to me like it could be a flat bottom break. We're down in the day. We have a very clear flat bottom of 344. And I mean, look at this, like higher, we have this high of 347 and change. Then we get to 346.50. Then we get to 345, lower highs, and then a very flat bottom. Um, I think this is not a bad look. I don't want to get involved until I see more movement to the downside, because right now this, this candle is making me a little bit nervous. But yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting look. I'm going to keep my eye on meta. I just saw that in my side chart and was like, hmm. Also, go down to Eli Lilly. Please just punch about how this turned out. 
Um, I want to talk through it. So basically, I started to zoom in because of the dark pool wicks here. But so I got out where I did. I initially said I was going to you know, get out 613, most of it, save a piece of the dream. But then I was watching. This is why I like, you know, I, I jokingly call it scalping, but whatever you call it, I just have to keep, I like keeping an eye on the tape, especially for something that moves like Eli Lilly, because it can give you really a sense of how the stock is moving and what areas it's clinging to like glue. Opie and I were talking about this last week when, when he and I were on, and it was like, you know, we're talking about how different stocks tapes move differently, right? And um, I think with, with Eli Lilly, I find the tape will move very quickly and then all at once. But if you see an area that's really holding that, that's kind of an interest to me or an area it keeps going to. Uh, Eli Lilly had a really hard time getting above 612.50, so that's why I got part of my position out at 612.50 and then the rest out at 613. We had a nice pop to the upside. Happy I got out where I did because, I mean, I could have gotten a little bit more there, but I think we're, we're kind of tapering off a little bit here for Eli Lilly. If we make a lower high, I'm not going to get back in on this name. But I think I just needed, you know, I was feeling a little bit down after some of those earlier um, Eli Lilly trades. So I'm happy I just had one that was well planned out, that executed well, and that I did in, in the style that I like doing. So I think sometimes, like, if you're not, things aren't going well, just, like, reset your focus. You know, re you make sure your head screwed on right and just try to get back to, to trading. There we go. Dua Lipa or Taylor Swift? Why is this a question? I think my answer is no. I, you have to choose one or the other. Okay. You're forced to choose. Is there a context Gun for a to reason? Your head. Okay. Well, whatever. Do do a leap. I like the cover she did of that Arctic Monkey song. Do I want to know for some <sighs> British um, radio? I like that. Thank you, Fabian. Yeah, I, I like her style. Um, she I was. I, I like her as a mermaid in the Barbie movie yeah. with John Cena. That was kind of weird and funny, um, and not a spoiler. <laughs> but yeah, so I, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I like Dua Lipa. Okay. What about you? I'm gonna have to say the exact same thing. Um, and I, like, look at this. Dua Lipa over Taylor Swift says Ice Sniper, and then Rusha Bata. Yeah. He's like, don't be dumb. Taylor Swift, not even a question, according to Rubisha. Um, all right, pitch bolt Dua Keepa. <laughs> okay, I bro. Seen, I remember um, Dula, Dula Peep. I forget who said Dula Peep, but I think somebody at one point announced her as Dula Peep or something. Yeah, and well, Dua Lipa's not like a lightweight either. She also has almost 100 million Instagram followers. Mm, yeah, yeah, so she's pretty I knew she was now. like big. I mean, she does like her songs are catchy and fun. I have no complaints about Dula Lipa. I like Dula the Peep. Chilean Nightmares way it in where Dua stands here, boy. Yes, okay, Honest Abe 90 Dua Lipa. I have to agree. I Yep. <laughs> also, Ferris versus Bulls going off. I here. love it. No I opinion on Swift, or are you just being kind? <laughs> yeah, Don't exactly. Don't hate me. We, I mean, thank you, Ferris versus Bulls, but I'm not going to take the bait because I'm trying to. We're, we're, we're a trading show here, um, but we've heard me talk about Taylor Swift before. I am not a huge fan. I know. I know how you feel. Yeah. Adil saying a billion in tour sales, full stop. That's all he's going to say about that. I, I mean, you know, we can't really argue with that. The yeah. uh, where is the money at? Right? So uh, no question about it. Guys, NEXI just woke up again. Uh, be careful with this one. Small cap gapper du jour, 250%. Coming back above 8 bucks, Knocking on the door of that 850 again. It's had trouble with 850 before. Sure, it got up into that 8 and 3 quarters. But look where all the closing prints are. They're just a smidge above 850. At that 853 is the highest closing print here on the one minute look. It's incrementally making its way up though. So if we were to zoom out on NXPI, sorry, and EXI, excuse me, we have that higher low um, trend intact. It's just the higher high is uh, the kind of the question uh, that's outstanding at the moment because we couldn't break through that initial higher high here. We got into that nine bucks area, um, sorry, yeah, we got into that nine bucks area, got into nine and a third, but on this ascent, we couldn't break through that 850. Now we are knocking on the door of 850 again, Whew. and here we go. It's squeezing, and there it goes. Oh my goodness. Look at this insane stock. It's going to likely halt at 10 bucks. Uh, yeah, this one really rocketing up. 310%, $10 a level on this, big size at 10. Can it break through 10? I thought this was gonna halt, but uh, there, it, it didn't. But we clearly have a big seller at 10 Adara showing size here on the book. Can we get through 10? Nine, uh, nine ninety nine, just like a matter of time now. Here, there goes, there goes Max and the Lambo, and there goes ten, right up into that oh ten fifty area. God. Goodness gracious, N E X I is on when it's flying. This is so entertaining. Like, I mean, I love the market. I have to say, 
That would, you know, I'm so happy I have, um, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big kahunas aren't there. I, yeah, 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 also, yeah. the bears look so sad. The bears have, like, fallen over well, over the there. Well, the bears are pretty apropos. Yeah. yeah. Cat in the hat bears. is there. Oh, hi. Cat in the hat's having her lunch. How are you, Cat? How you feeling? She's tired. All right. We well, love we, cat. We feel cat. that, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but, yeah. You want to do Benzing? Uh, I yeah. did Oh, you did it? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I yeah. didn't know that you did it. I think I, I, awesome. think I might. I don't. I did do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did do it. Also, yeah, okay. Eddie R. asking kind of an interesting question. This is a little bit while earlier, Go but I just it. saw the tag here. As a person from a later generation, what is your view on what Bitcoin is? Huh. I don't. I love, I love the question. question. Yeah. I, I don't. I wish I had a better answer for you. I think, honestly, I've learned a lot more about Bitcoin and how it functions since starting here. You know what I mean? So over the last, like, I can't believe it's been like four months. I feel like I've learned you know, a little bit more about kind of how Bitcoin functions. I would say my view on it is I think I, I do get why you brought up the age thing because I think part of the way Bitcoin is, is I think a lot of older generation, I mean, even James Gorman of, um, my, uh, I almost said Microsoft MS, Morgan Stanley, um, getting the tags confused with the business here or the, the ticker, sorry. But yeah, so, um, so James Gorman saying that like, you know, having some thoughts about Bitcoin earlier today, um, I think it's it's really interesting that I think and we know how Jamie Diamond or, or J, JP Diamond feels about um, Jeremy Diamond. Yeah, Jer sorry, Jeremy <laughs> Diamond um, feels about Bitcoin as well, right? So I think it is something that like I, the banks seem a little bit more hesitant. I think it's not all people from older generations, but certainly you know certain generations seem a little bit more skeptical. I would say I, I'm kind of neutral on it. You know what I mean? I think it, it's a very cool technology. I think it, it's definitely like some kind of technological. Invention, but I think like every technology, it's about how you use it. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think a lot of people kind of feel because there have been a lot of crypto related scams. And there was the stuff with CZ and Binance. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. There was the stuff with um, what did, Sam uh, Bankman Free. What did J Jamie Diamond say? He's like, it's only good for yeah, criminals. criminals and stuff like right? that. Right. Well, that was where I was. Yeah. And I know James, James Gorman was less like critical about it, but he definitely wasn't like a, a huge fan. But no, I think that's, I think like everything, it's like, you know, shout up to Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility. And I think that's the case with technology. I think yeah. that's the case with crypto. It's not only for criminals. Some criminals have misused it, but that doesn't mean it's inherently bad. So I'm neutral on it. I'm agnostic. Yeah. Uh, look, I think it has its purpose. I think, uh, number one, um, the fact that there's a finite amount of them is very important because what we've seen central banks do is print, print, print. And that devalues money. And, well, we have all sorts of issues. You saw what happened with COVID. I'm sure, you know, the, the programs were well-intentioned. Uh, these uh, stimulus programs on both sides of the border, we had our fair share of that here as well. I'm sure it helped a lot of people out. But the fact of the matter is we have to deal with that now. And that's why we've been having rate increases. And this is the whole thing with inflation. So I get all that. I, I'm, you know, I think it's going to have a purpose. Whether or not the regulators get involved to try and kill it, that's an entirely different story, and then it becomes a political story rather than a financial one. But I think it's already been politicized a little bit too, right? Like it's interesting how everybody so from every party wants yeah. to get. Yes. We're like scrapping over here. I don't know what my hands are doing. But like but. Uh, Fabian and I were talking like I, I think a, like a month ago or something like that, and I was telling him how I liked the fact that Ethereum had those smart contracts. So so say something. So say for example, I want to sell you a house, right? Uh, right now in Ontario, you have to go through the land registry, the land titles registry. So the province makes a database and each house has a particular uh, electronic ownership. Remember how it used to be deeds? I would yeah. have to like sign over a deed to you and you would have the yeah. deed notarized by a lawyer or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Chilean nightmare, baby. Um, Basically, with smart contracts, there can be a decentralized system where ownership is always known. And so okay. I can sell you the house and it could be in one second I can send you the transfer and there could be this uh, program where the money is only released when the deed is transferred to you and we're both hands off. So that the, the contract between you and I no longer requires an intermediary. In the States, they use an escrow service where the money is deposited. And then once the, uh, the land title is moved over, the money is given to you. Okay. In Ontario, we use lawyers for that. You leave the money with the lawyer in their trust account, and then they release the money over to you once the, the deed has been uh, or the, the ownership has been transferred. When you have smart contracts, you forego the need for all of that. Okay. Right. So I think that there's a lot of good practical application to some of these uh, cryptocurrencies, aside from the money value of it. Um, I think they're fantastic. But you it know, is really we're, we're, cool. Yeah, it, it yeah. is pretty cool. Um, I wanted to mention um, Apple, Adara, because Apple, 
well, we obviously know it's been uh, the weak one lately. <laughs> we used to call it the dead one, but it's coming into VWAP. And so this is interesting me here. Last time around, when we got into VWAP, it was an interesting rejection where we got a big move down off that 184, let's say in a third. We got back down to 183, let's say in a half. So it was a nice, uh, nice move down there. Now we're right back at that critical resistance level again. 184 and a third is where VWAP is on my chart. And we're having trouble again. So I'm starting to think that this might be an interesting short. But like as my friend Neil would like to, likes to say, get it on the back end. Don't guess. Show, let it prove to you that this is a resistance level and give it a couple of red candles uh, or allow it to form a couple of red candles before you start uh, punching short into this one. Here we go. It's touching VWAP now. Does it continue up? I mean, as, as much as I see a possible rejection of VWAP, how about this? This possible double bottom, yeah. right? Uh, which is a reversal uh, um, pattern. And we know that the trend that preceded it was down. So it wouldn't be, on, wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility for us to have a double bottom here at this 183 and a half and to maybe trend back up for a little bit. So I have no idea. I'm going to wait for it to develop, but I'm really liking a possible short on Apple at VWAP. Yeah, no, I think that, because I, I, was, I was considering, like I said, shorting Apple, what I thought was going to be flat bottom break. And that's why, you know, um, what, like what Greg, you were saying earlier, anticipate, uh, participate, don't anticipate. Yep. That's why you can't just assume, because like I thought that Apple was going to be flat bottom break there. And then we, you know, swoop back to the upside. So very interesting time. Um, I think that's an interesting look. Also, Meta, I still have my eye on. Not quite a flat bottom, because we ended up slightly higher here. But if we continue to make lower lows, could be interested in a short. If we make a higher high here, it could be a reversal play. But I, mm. if it's a reversal, I don't really want to get involved because right. volume is kind of meh. It's meh. -ta. It's meh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, You're yeah, joking. the volume's not doing enough for me to be kind of um, super um, enticed by this one uh, at this point in terms of like if it if it does reverse to the upside. Right. But if we keep having lower lows and a flat bottom. Um, I would do a short and I would take it to Dua Lipa? this. Uh, <laughs> Dua Lipa. I would do a leap. No, I'm joking. But I would um, take it to the 342. And I say that because that was where we had some support earlier. So, like, you know, using previous levels to find areas of exit. And I think that's too, um, this kind of reminds me, this is a conversation we had like a little bit a uh, while ago as well, like different times of day trading. And know different people are kind of midday, you know, like traders. And why I think I like trading in the midday mm. um, is because I like ha kind of having levels to fall back on yes. from the intraday. And it's a little you know, slower. I don't yeah. feel like as uh, ang like, as much anxiety yeah. in the opening. Like Sean is fantastic right. at Sean trading like these opening range nutty moves. He's got levels. He holds his temper, right? Like a, a shout out to him, man. But it's just not my cup of tea. I need more, you know, stability. So I definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, no, I think, and so that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I think with Meta, too, like, the fact that we're able to kind of look at where we popped off of open and this 342 and be like, hey, this could be a level. Not something you'd be able to do if you traded from open, right? So, like, I think, yeah, like, Sean and Neil, like, I, I do not know how they manage to manage, like, so many positions and get in and out, like, oh, open. Yeah. Like, it's super impressive to me. Everyone has their own style of trading, I think, right? Straight it's up. kind of the, a thing that I want to... Um, to, yeah, James Dell saying pros. Yeah, there you go, right? Yeah, you, you summed exactly it up. Exactly what it is. Got yeah. it in one fell swoop. Four letters. There you go, right? But I think I think two like different different traders have different styles, and I think especially two with, with the small caps. A lot of the small caps you like trading will make these moves in the midday, right? And so, the pre market. And like, the pre market remember how too. Often I come in. Adara is like typically the first one in, right? Neil and, and so I usually, Neil, yeah. yeah, sorry, Neil is the first one in, and then uh, I don't know if like you're like a few minutes later or whatever. Um, and then I'm third. I'm always typically third. Brendo sometimes was third, but I've been breeding, beating. Brendo lately. And the first thing I say, Adara, look how many small caps there are. Yeah. And they're always moving in the pre-market and then there's no vol volatility halt parameters. So they go the way they want to go. They go like crazy. Yeah. Uh, here we go on AAPL. It, okay. So guys, the market's moving up here. All right. We just broke through 16.6 on the NQ. Uh, which also happened to be VWAP. Google's pumping, Microsoft is pumping, and uh, every essentially everything except NVIDIA here is uh, curling to the high side. NVIDIA has already, you know, had a bit of a move up. But here's what I'm talking about on the future. So let's not get too excited that we're we're going to start trending up here. The big move up off that 16.550, we come into 16.66. 
16.60, excuse me. And there is a bit of a topping tail candle into 16.620. It's a smidge above uh, that 100 point level now, which also happens to be VWAP. VWAP on my chart is at 16.606. So about six points higher than the 100 point level. We did actually make a higher high above this little wick over here. That takes us into 16, what, what was this? 16.618. This one went all the way to 16.619. So nothing, essentially. Uh, the same level. We're going to need a closing print above this level, not just a quick wick. So let's see what we do here on the future. But, you know, if I had to guess, I think this is probably just a dead cat bounce. But who knows? I could be wrong. Uh, I personally want it to trend up just for the personal account. But my inclination is telling me that we're probably just going to reverse off this level. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, look at this already right back down to 16.6. Does it hold here, though? I mean, you know, we talk about the wicking dance. Are, are we going to hold above this level? It looks awfully ugly. That's a topping tail candle if I've ever seen one. Let's see what we get. But nice move up on the future. Let's see if it's able to sustain itself. If it doesn't, then the short on Apple will be very interesting uh, with a possible move down into that 183.5 where we know we have support because there's been a double bottom at that level. But I don't want to jump into this one too quickly. Let's see what we get. But... Yeah, important levels here on the future and um, on Apple, seeing as Apple is at VWAP. Let's see what the chat's up to. Um, so, broadest wolf, I, I responded to your um, to your question about what do I d think about uh, S triple Q calls. I asked you, are you holding them intraday or are you holding it for uh, a swing trade? Because obviously, you know, the S triple Qs have been printing over the last two days because we've been selling off aggressively on the future. So just um, Tag me there in the chat. Let me know if you're looking at a swing or what your uh, what your idea there is. Big Eddie R. How many cats do we need? <laughs> at the, do we need to end up bouncing each day? I don't know, brother. Uh, I don't I don't choose how many there are. It's just <laughs> it, we had such a big down move on the future these past couple of days. You'll have to forgive me for thinking that everything is a dead cat bounce, but I could be wrong. We could start trending to the high side here. Um, Chef Joe Sharif. Was that the five minute chart? Yes, sir. So anytime I bring in the black charts, like these ones over here, they're always on the five minute time frame. okay? I'm always charting on the, top, on the five or the 15. Anytime you see the white charts, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's gonna be the one or the three, okay? Um, Diamond Realty of Miami, Nexi, nice flush. Let's have a look at what NEXI did. Oh, geez, Louise. Yeah, this is why we talk about these stocks and Ooh. the danger of trading these stocks. And, you know, I got to tell you, I'm not going to shout out anybody by name, but there are small cap traders out there that are very good. They do it every day and they do it proficiently and they do it effectively. And those guys, they don't typically hold this for that long. They're in there with several thousand shares uh, for maybe a minute, a few minutes, a few seconds, whatever it is. And they're constantly getting in and getting out, taking profit, adding back when it moves, taking profit. So what the whole point of why I'm telling you this is, this might not be the type of stock, the small cap gapper category that you want to hold on to for that long. It's mostly like you, you get in your profits, you get out, especially when it gets crazy volatile like this and flies through that flat top here that at eight and a half on NEXI and touches. Did it actually get up into that 11 area or is that like a dark pool wick? No, it did. It got into 1097. That's a legitimate wick. So it flew up from eight bucks to 11 bucks in a matter of minutes. And well, you see what it's doing now, right back into $8 again. So, um, shout out to you guys. Oh, we're getting big Kyle Burdett's in the chat, baby. Uh, what a happy new year. Ole Santa finally got the red chimney. Shout out to you, Kyle. I know uh, you're a bear, so you've been printing a lot lately. Uh, shout out to you, my man. Hope you continue to print. Eddie R, it's a cat massacre lately. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Majid, uh, Muzaffari Majd, uh, Sharif, can you please check SoFi? Yes, I will check SoFi. Got downgraded today. Not a good look yeah. for them. Uh, you want to have a look at SoFi yeah, or should I? I, I mean, I, some, there's a super chat asking for you to look at SoFi. Oh. So I guess. The, um, LJD, two pound super chat. SoFi, um, reverse pen and handle. Sharif, question mark, question mark. Yes, question sir. Uh, I will have to put uh, it up on my chart over here. Yeah, Let's no take worries. off AISP, SOFI. Let's yeah. have a look. So um, before I go into all that, let me just give you the deets here on what is going on with SoFi. So here are my notes for the show. 
uh, this morning. So here's what the analysts wrote on SoFi. KBW downgrade stock to underperform from market perform and cut the price target from 650, sorry, to 650 from 750. The brokerage basically updated their 2024 revenue and EBITDA forecast for SoFi to around $493 million of revenue, which is about 10 to 17% below what the street was expecting, largely due to what they say will be slower origination growth and technology revenue. A little vague, but whatever. Um, the rally in December came as a result of rate cuts. The stock jumped around 36.5% in November after four consecutive month, months of declines. That's after it rose nicely back in June on the back of that Supreme Court decision, uh, basically saying that the Biden uh, student loan forgiveness was unconstitutional, but he's since come at it from a different angle, so we'll see how that works out. They go on to say SoFi shares remain polarizing, but noise aside, anytime a growth stock is trading at a premium valuations with 15 to 20 percent downside potential to consensus EBITDA, we believe a more cautious stance is appropriate, wrote Mike uh, Perito, which is an analyst at KBW. Four out of five stars, he's rating this bad boy. The average rating amongst 18 brokerages is a hold with a medium price target of around $8 and a half. Um, the stock hit four months highs last month, last week, pardon me, but more than doubled in value in 2023. So um, that is uh, the look there, but now let's go to the five, let, the daily, I mean. Have a look at the daily. As you can see, it's a very like uh, tough chart, you know, to, to, to analyze here because there's just so many, these outlying events like you have a big pop-up in february 2023 and then you had it again you had a big lead up look at this off that four and a half dollar got all the way up into 10 bucks 10 uh, 10 bucks and a quarter because of the tailwind the supreme court tailwind and then we got a sell the news type event where we moved back down into seven uh seven and a half bucks off uh once the supreme court decision came out then we popped up again for whatever reason in August into the, the highest we've been at, you know, in the last, I would say, couple of years, that $11.70 area here on SOFI. Let me put in the ticker. Sorry, guys, so you guys can follow along. So it's a tough one to chart, but what I definitely see as of late are these higher lows, okay? We had a bit of a downtrend here like this from, uh, say, late summer into... Uh, mid-fall when we got uh, the November lows, but since then we've been pumping back up, got, touched 1050, and now we're rejecting right back into 850. This is a really tough one to, to chart, especially when you look at where we were during the pandemic uh, times at that $25 area, a bit of a double top there, and then it was down into the right since then. Look, you know, I could easily say to you, wait for it to clear $10, wait for it to clear 1150, but every time it's done that and it's made a newer high and it's cleared the previous high, it's sold off. So I'm really hesitant to say that. Um, this one I really don't have an opinion on. I got to tell you the truth. One of the few ones I don't, and I wouldn't touch it just because it's just been so unpredictable. I haven't, you haven't been able to gauge this properly, right? I mean, we, we were talking about this one being, um, you know, really looking for the student loan forgiveness program to end because they make a lot of their money on higher, higher um, interest rate more, uh, loans refinancing those at lower rates and that's how they kind of drag in customers i know they've expanded their uh their their offering somewhat just you know from that uh student loan refinancing program they do other things but it's just been way too hard uh to gauge and and even harder to chart so sorry i can't i can't really help there um evan 11 thank you very much my friend 199 super chat i loved you loved Trader he TV. He meant love. Okay, good, yeah, good. He, All right. It was not intentional. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, thank you very thank much you. for that super chat. LJD, can you look at SoFi Mucker? Yeah, I just did. Oh, LJD. that was the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, guys. Big love. Thank you very much, LJD, and shout out uh, to you. Where in England are you from? I studied in Leicester from two years. East Midlands, baby. Leicestershire. Uh, and I, I loved my time there, and obviously that got me into soccer. Otherwise, I didn't, didn't really cheer for that's cool. I mean, it makes sense if you're living in it, too, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's, like, pro football. Yes. Uh, oh, are they ever? Prem, yeah. Right, good. Yeah, the Prem, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, what's your look over there? What yeah, also, yeah, I saw, I, I guess I just saw another super chat from Evan11 here, 199. I still love Trinder TV. Thank you so much again for your support. And a member chat from Broadcast Wolf, SQQQ -S -S -Q -Q calls I have till Fed meeting. Um, yeah, the, the Fed, I think the Fed minutes will definitely be interesting coming out today. I have SoFi um, intraday chart up in here. This is the five minute. I do like this kind of rounded cup situation. We're going to have to wait and see here, though. I don't want to make any assumptions because I also have to feel like we could fall off this area. I did have, I did pull Disney up because Disney did have, I'm going to pull up the exact wording of this, but I know there's some, you know, that I guess it's like like a whole succession type thing going on in Disney over here, like an episode of succession with um, yeah, what, so what's been going on with um, Trianne and Nelson Peltz. Yes. Um, father-in-law of uh, Brooklyn Beckham, which is not relevant, but just something I find really interesting. Is that actually accurate? Yeah. So no Brooklyn Beckham, way. so the, the son of Victoria and David <laughs> Beckham is married to uh, Nelson Pelsa's daughter. No way. Yeah. Big Nelson, eh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I, thought, I just think it's funny that they're all related by marriage, but anyways, not Did relevant. he make his way onto the Beckham, uh, what was that, the reality show? I with can't. with uh, Victoria, what was that called? I don't. Did he find bamboozle his way on there? Or? I have no idea. I know. Okay. I know now. Brooklyn fashions himself a photographer. I think that's Brooklyn's thing right now. Okay, okay. But yeah. Um. So basically, Disney confirming. Sorry, for getting off track there. Uh, confirming that Blackwell's Capital LCC has provided notice of its intent to nominate three individuals for election to the company's board of directors at the 2024 annual meeting of shareholders. This shareholder meeting. I wish there, you could be a fly on the wall for that. Holy cow. Um, Honestly, so it'll yeah. be really action-packed. Also, Disney has gotten support from Value Act Capital for an information-sharing agreement to facilitate strategic consultation. I said that word so weirdly. Consultation during the company's transformation. Mm. So there we go. In terms of Disney chart, there's one area I want to really talk about, and that is that 91 area. At least on the, I'll, I'll go into the daily after, but look at this five minute in the 91. Like we were having these wicks off 91 earlier, 91 coming in again, um, and then we like flew higher, uh, and generally good look on the day, um, up on a day where very few names are, or at least were earlier, um, higher low, higher low, higher low, looks like a higher low, but I would be watching us come back into that 91, because if you look here at Disney, 91 has been an area at least for today. Um, let's look at the daily chart. Um, yeah, I like, um, I, I do like the look of um, the daily on, on Disney here. Like, I mean, I think what this $80 area, this double bottom, really nice move. We move up to 96, then we kind of move down. Now we're chopping and turning around this kind of $90 area. Um, I think, you know, what, if you zoom in a little bit more, what I am seeing, though, is sort of a downward trend. And by that, I mean lower lows, lower highs. I think it needs to um, kind of figure out it needs it to, to yeah, what it grows up, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, also part of why I pulled up Disney too is because um, Fabian just sent me this thing. We were talking about movies earlier. We were also mm. talking about yesterday um, about oh, the um, IP running out, the Mickey Mouse yeah, horror man. movie. Yes, what is going on with this? I saw this earlier. No, bring it in, bring it in. What's the deal? What's the headline say? <laughs> um, a second, second Mickey Mouse horror movie has been announced. What is going on there? So hold on, I'm kind of confused. So the fact that they lost the IP. That... So anyone, anyone can, can use okay, the so, characters. So naturally, oh, yeah. they, they had to go to a horror movie. Like, is that, <laughs> I don't get it. That's hilarious. Is that what Disney, Disney banned any horror movies well, of Mickey Mouse? I guess it's just like not really how you expect the character. Never mind. So my favorite character as a child was mm. Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh, and they made that movie Blood and Honey, which is a Winnie the Pooh horror movie that I will never be watching. Like my hilarious. friend heard about this, and she's like, Adara, we need to protect you from that movie. <laughs> because, yeah, no, I was like, that was my favorite character as a child but the point I'm trying to make is yeah I yeah. think this is going to be an interesting time not related to what Disney's moving today but I just thought that was kind of what reminded me of it so <laughs> thank you baby, <laughs> for, for sending me that um, I always found Steamboat Willie kind of creepy anyway with his little song so we'll have to see how it works as a horror movie but yeah I think um, I, I think Disney in 91 today very interesting oh no oh wow is that real Fabian <laughs> that is the real poster that's the real one okay yeah, that is it year. eh yeah. that's so hilarious um, okay, guys, quick headline here. Um, this is, I don't think it's breaking or anything, but one that I didn't really realize until now. Intel 
to spin out AI software firm that's coming in today. Here's the headline. Intel on Wednesday said it was forming a new independent company around its artificial intelligence software efforts with backing from Digital Focus Asset Manager, Digital Bridge Group, and other investors. Intel executives would not comment on the value of the deal or whether it would retain a majority stake in the new venture other than to say that the firm would have an independent board of directors and the chip maker would remain a shareholder. The new entity, which will not be publicly traded, but will be called Articulate, Articu, and then Eight, and then AI, pronounced Articulate AI, is an outgrowth of work on corporate AI technology that Intel initially carried out with Boston Consulting Group, now to be carried out with this other digital bridge group. So we'll have to see how that all pans out. Here's a chart on Intel, not doing much today, down 1.4% as semis have been hit hard this year. SOXS, the semi triple uh, triple levered bear ETF yesterday, did the second amount of volume second highest amount of volume after the S triple Qs. So it hasn't been a good 2024 yet for the, the semis and the microchips, but we'll have to wait and see whether Intel is able to get a nice tailwind off this particular headline. I'm just noticing it now. I didn't see it earlier. All right, uh, let's go back into the big caps here because I was talking about possibly wanting to short Apple at this uh, VWAP level, but look what it's done here. It's printed higher highs and now it's holding VWAP from the top side. So it's at that 184 and a half level. It really hasn't rocketed up or anything. So a possible still that we could get a short on, on Apple at this level. But the other thing that I'm keeping my eye on is the Fuge. We're at exactly at that uh, 100 point level. We're really straddling 16.6 here and not from the top side or the downside. I don't know what to make of this. So I'm not gonna try to guess. I'm gonna let the, the price action develop and then we'll take a trade on whatever happens. But uh, I was kind of looking for this to either break up or break down and then for Apple to follow on the future here. So 16.6 right now at the future, just below VWAP at the moment as well. Haven't been able to make that higher high on a closing basis, a perfunctory break doesn't count. I'm talking about this crest over here and uh, comparing it to this one, uh, basically it's the same level. And so keeping an eye on that, but Apple st stair stepping up, it's that 184 and a half. The Katina man has arrived. You guys were in a meeting for a minute, eh? Don't worry about our meeting. <laughs> Tuna. What do you got there? Finally, tuna. This Didn't we so get that good. yesterday? Some rice. Yes, we did, my friend. That rice looks good. But it's Thank it's you. good food nonetheless. Got some cabbage man. on there. All right, all right. I'm gonna take some rice. You got some food. rice. Is that basmati? Yes. Yes, it's very nice, I have no man. Because <laughs> there was chicken and rice, I think, for the main, the main course. Yeah, I saw the uh, quarter chickens yeah, there. Chicken. They look. Oh, quarter fantastic. chicken. Okay. No, good yeah, to know. You guys are fired. My bad. Aw, I guess we're fired. Let's go, Adara. <laughs> Take the mic. We're having a good time, baby. <laughs> Shout out to the Katina man. He's back there. So uh, yeah. we'll be updating you about the Katina man's positions once he starts bringing them in here. Uh, uh, Palantir and Mara Short right now with the Katina man. Uh, Neil, did you see Intel had a headline, eh? Um, spinning off a new AI company with... Uh, it's an AI software company. I just want to point that out to you because I know that uh, you follow Intel closely. So I don't know exactly when that headline came out, but I just saw it now. All right, Dilof, don't worry about his meeting. Uh, yeah, I know, bro. I just have to, the Katina man, you know, we're just going to have to, uh, yeah. Darwin, <laughs> NASDAQ, nice to meet with the SEC today to discuss spot Bitcoin ETF, says source. Interesting, okay. Thank you for that, Darwin. OG in the chat. Why Brothers United, Apple short making Katina man to sing. Well, we're, we're not jumping in that short quite yet on AAPL because despite the fact that the future has rejected now 16.6 to the downside, Apple really isn't, you know, tanking here. Um, so I'm going to be patient uh, about this Apple short uh, at VWAP. But yeah, I was definitely looking for the future to, to reject 16.6. But Apple is not re responding in the way that I thought it would. Anyway, it's coming down off that 184.5 into the 184.40, but not with the same vigor that I anticipated. We'll keep an eye here on the future. But it looks like we are rejecting 16,600, and we are coming right back down here after dancing with it for about 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 25 minutes worth of dancing. So it's quite a long dance, Adara. 
That's a long dance. Yeah. This is like, like this. This is like at some kind of wedding where it's like you know where you have like the bride dancing and then she's with the groom yes. and then the father of the bride. Like that is the 25 minute dance that it's taking its time over there. It is. I also I just want to oh, mention one th thing before because yeah. the Nos boss was on earlier and this is a you know the teaching show. So Michael Nos showed us exactly what scanner he uses to find his swing trading ideas and what he looks at for some of his swing trading ideas. So I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna open it up for all those who are subscribed to Trader TV. This is a very easy process. For those who are not subscribed, there is the code right there, Trader TV 20, you get 20% off, make sure to check it out. So here's how you do it. You go into new and you go to um, doc, doc channel bar, was it doc channel bar? Yeah, it was. Yeah, doc there channel it is. bar. You kick, click doc channel bar, you get this window. And then on the left over here, you get a bunch Ooh. of different options, right? My portfolio, explosive winners, uh, S&P 500 stock racing. We're gonna click this one, swing picks. You click that bad boy and it's already made up for you. We would load a chart here, but I have too many charts loaded up. So it prevents me from loading up anymore, but typically there would be a chart right here, guys. And then you would see all your list of TI strength. Recall what he meant by TI strength. TI strength is kind of on the balance of the evidence. He uses MACD, RSI, all the different indicators that he factors in, and these put together um, a list of possible trade ideas, which are on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen and you can keep your eye on that. So anybody who wants to learn how to uh, swing trade and wants a source for some ideas, make sure to check out Trade Ideas and the swing trading portion of it, Adair. Yeah, and I mean, I think two trade ideas, like back to kind of what we're talking about this week, which is stock picking and scanning yeah. and watch list. I think trade ideas is one of the biggest things I use. Like if I see a story, it helps me confirm, is this thing moving, it doesn't have volume, or sometimes I'll just like, if I'm like, you know, not finding any stories, like a day like today, there's not much moving. This is how I first noticed SoFi was down, as I saw SoFi like on the, the biggest, like, you know, the I guess the gappers to the downside. I saw that and I was like, oh, why SoFi down 7.5% or whatever it was at that time. Now it's obviously down a lot more. Yes, ma'am. But so I looked into it. And so I feel like it, it's really good example of just even looking, we were talking about yesterday, mm -hmm. seeing movement before you see the chart sometimes, just seeing like purely on a numbers basis, what is this stock doing? Why, you know, why is it doing this thing? Like what right. can we kind of look for? You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of, um, I think a really useful thing for that, and I think a big part of what helps me form the watch list that we all get here at Trader TV live. Um, so yeah, really fun time. I do find it extremely helpful, and I really appreciate Michael Noss chatting with everybody here about yeah, um, the, NOS boss. Yeah, the watch list, the Noss boss indeed. Um, also, I pulled up Palantir. I forget who in the chat was asking for Palantir, but to whoever you are, um, I have pulled up Palantir. Um, Palantir on, I know Sean is in this short. Um, oh yeah, my dad's account, that's what it's called. The, the, I love that username. <laughs> um, I have pulled out uh, Palantir here Sick for man. my dad's account. This is an interesting one, because we have lower high, slightly um, higher lows, but also lower highs. I don't really want to say compression, because it generally looks like down in the day, and a lot of these higher lows are from pre-market. From where we opened, though, it's, it, I feel like this whole um, 16, 16, um, where is this, 16, oh, Eight areas kind of interesting as a bit of a bottom here for Palantir. Could it be a flat bottom break? I think we could do that just from where we opened. Like it's lower high, lower high, lower high. Or sorry, not lower high. Uh, this was a high and then we had lower highs. So I think it's kind of an interesting look on Palantir. I'm going to see if there's any more, um, if there's any catalyst on this guy. I haven't seen anything. Um, I'm seeing just an article about some uh, from Benzinga about, I guess, some worries about AI because a lot of these AI names have been a bit in flux after having wild years to the upside because it was a really strong AI move um, last year. But also um, another name kind of in that space, albeit more tangentially, is, um, well, I guess still not tangentially. It's, it's AI related. It's NVIDIA. Let's look at NVIDIA. And this unfortunate trade I made earlier, which I'll talk about in a minute. But for now, I just want to look at the chart because NVIDIA, I, I was saying earlier, I think NVIDIA, this um, could have been like a longer term flat bottom break in this 473. I got into this long because I liked... Um, I should have gotten out here, this like 479.50. I was trying to take it 478.50 to 479.50. We never quite got there. Um, and then we kind of flew to the downside, um, like literally fell from under me. Should have been a bit scalpier here. Alas, you know, I, I can reflect on the trade and recognize. Like I said today, it's not my best trading day, but reflecting, hopefully learning. Um, and yeah, NVIDIA definitely um, 
that the long would have been way earlier here this, at, at this initial bounce. Or sorry, not 473, 474 as the bottom here for NVIDIA. But yet, then we kind of chopped around VWAP for quite a bit. And as, we were, as we've been saying, VWAP's not always going to be an area of interest for a stock, but if VWAP interacts with the stock in a certain way, something worth taking mo note of. I think this is a really interesting look. Like we had this bounce, lower high, and then we kind of came back to this 578, 478, 50 area. NVIDIA, NVIDIA is not at 578. So I almost said NVIDIA there, so oops. But then we fell here from about 478.50 to 476. Are we forming a bit more of a bottom at 476? Either way, what I can say is um, NVIDIA is just moving in really weird directions. It's not a stock I think I can get involved in right now. I need a bit clearer of a sense of direction. And right now, NVIDIA is unfortunately not providing me with that. But you know what it is? Eli Lilly, and that direction is to the upside. Last time I looked at this thing, we were at um, 6.13. We are at 6.15 now. No signs of stopping. Lilly is, is super happy. I was pleased as punch by this little train I got here. Oh, thank you. I'm going to start hitting that when you say please. I appreciate please, that. I like that. I know that you really enjoyed this phrase. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Happy, I'm happy. But yeah, so I mean, unfortunately, I did have some kind of mistake longs here. This first one, I can definitely say I, it was a bit of a FOMO. I got, I sat down on my desk. I saw it was moving from the big desk. And I don't trade, um, you know, when I'm on the big desk because I want to focus on all the new stuff. So I got, I saw that this was happening and I was like, mm. uh, so I wanted to get in in the FOMO. I got in way too early. Same here. I think this, the, the second trade, there was a bit more set up. It just still did not quite work out. Both times it didn't take many shares, but then I saved you know, some more share size or share edge, as Sharif says, for getting back in here at uh, 6.11.50. And I liked it, even though it, it was kind of a falling knife, I chose this level because that was where we had a lot of strength here. We kept bouncing off from that level. I got in uh, and then moved to the upside. Um, Max Pharma saying, Lily explodes. Yes, it indeed, yeah, moving to the upside. Didn't get involved um, because, again, because I, you know, I, I, I like kind of more rangy stuff. And I, you know what I mean? Like, like we were saying earlier, too, about times of day you like to trade. Part of why I like trading in the midday is because by the time you know, we're sitting here at the midday, I can kind of see what levels have developed. And that was why I was able to get the 611 move off of Lily. So there we go. See. That is my take on Eli Lilly. Um, and that was my take on NVIDIA, which is E. But yeah. Um, what, yeah, it's a, hey, All right, guys, uh, people have been yelling about NEO for a while now because it was really depressed earlier, gapped down, but Chinese ADRs today, for whatever reason, are strong. The majority of them, save and except for a few here, mostly to do with solar, are green on the day. You have BABA almost at 2%. PDD is above 2%. You have my favorite stock, Liado. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. 2.6%. But here comes NEO. NEO had this headline earlier today. It was essentially the repurchase right notification of its convertible senior notes that were due in 2026, and that sent the stock negative on the day, but it's since recovered. And now, Adara, we are up one and a third percent here on NIO, coming into that kind of consolidation range that we had yesterday. Look at this range here. Now, you know, it's not an exact range, but essentially, um, it was around that eight and a half dollar area where we kind of, you know, mostly had resistance. We've broken through that. We've gone to 856 uh, as a high a day, and we're just like, you know, putting in those higher highs here on NIO. Um, obviously, this is what I would be looking at in terms of resistance. I'm not saying N Neo is going to make it up to $8.80, but that, that is where the gap is right there. After we kind of tanked yesterday at the open, that was the bottom end of the range in the pre-market around that $8.80. I'd like to see it possibly make it back up to $8.80. I don't know about today, though. Uh, we'll see what we get on NIO, but just want to point that out there, 1.43% now in the green on NIO, making higher highs and higher lows, despite the fact that we got a, you know, a not so good uh, catalyst this morning um, on it. Now, uh, anything else I want to point out here? Yeah, the Mara trade still doing its thing here at 23 and a third, it really hasn't changed. Uh, we wanted that kind of huge break on the trade on Mara through that top here at 23.75, but we really haven't gotten that. We've been rejecting off that 75 level um, a bunch of times, so we'll have to see. The higher lows are still in play though on Mara. That's the thing. That's what's holding up this whole this whole trade. You're not, you're not really getting an explosive move through 23 and three quarters, but you are getting incrementally higher lows uh, despite that. So good look there on Mara. 
Um, somebody was asking me in the, in the chat, where is Sean short on Mara? I don't even know if he's short, but uh, I will ask him when he gets back what his trade on Mara was. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the look there. Max Pharma, I like that. Thoughts on Mara? Can you get it to 24? Yeah, I just finished talking about that. So I think, um, I think that that uh, you know, speaks for itself. Higher lows, guys, on Mara, but in case we break down below 23, then that, the trend may be um, in jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, let's keep looking here. Jam Lockie, MSOS, halt. MSOS, that is the, um, what's it called? The uh, weed ETF. Yeah, I checked. I didn't see that it was halted on my end, but. Let me have a look. Yeah. Um, MSOS. What's going on, Neil? Yeah, it is. Oh, it is? What the hell just happened here on MSOS? It flew from $6.65, $6.65, pardon me, into that $7.04 halt. So I have no idea what the hell is happening here with MSOS. Let me look at the weed stocks, uh, see if they're popping off. Ever, ever, ever gen? What is this? Uh, Evogen is... DEA is reviewing marijuana's classification. We know that the Department of Health and Human Services last year recommended to the Drug Enforcement Agency that they reduce the categorization from a Schedule 1 to Schedule 3, I guess. Uh, the DEA is finally acting on that recommendation. I'm not sure. Neil just telling me that right now. Uh, I don't. That's the first thing I saw. That's the first thing he saw, he says. Let me pull up uh, Till right here and see if I'm getting that same. Uh, I'm not. I'm not getting it on my blotter, Neil. Um, let me look at Aurora Cannabis, see if anything's populating here. All my weed stocks are in the green. They're all in the green. Um, Tilray's up seven and two thirds. Cron is up three and a third. Tilray's above 8% now. So, guys, weed stocks should be looked at right now. They're all headed to the high side on the back of this catalyst. Let's pull up Tilray on this chart over here. We already knew that. I know, I hear Brendo saying we already knew it, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, we're pumping here for whatever reason. Tilray got off the schneid there at 218, now is knocking the door of 250, just made a new high there at 243. Watch out for this, so a lot of volatility coming in. The volume really flying in here on TLRY recently um, with this catalyst coming in. Uh, MSOS, Tilray, uh, ACB should also be on your, um, your watch list there for weed. What else? GRWG, CRON, all possible plays here, Adara, as we wait for some more information to come in. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting one. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure. I, I couldn't tell. The reason I couldn't tell the SOS was halted because usually my holds don't look like this in people are late, so I apologize. I was confused on that. Uh, yeah, up 12 and a bit percent, 12.43% for MSOS. Tilray also, yeah, like Sharif was saying, really strong. I would, I don't want to enter Tilray, but I like the idea of an entrance on Tilray because I like how this one looks here. Pumping. Like, yeah, so much news. Also, I appreciate all of the lovely puns here in the chat. Someone saying all in the green, and then I'm headed to the high side. Um, you <laughs> know, like I love a one. pun. Yeah, it's, and it's I like think all everything. in the green. Yeah. I love it. You guys oh, someone, are the best. Someone's saying weed stocks are high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. I, yeah, I enjoy that. I think definitely a, a strong move to the upside. A couple of people saying SNDL. So let's Sundial. look at Sundial. Yeah, Sundial yeah. Someone say, uh, Darwin's saying SNDL. Neil's favorite in brackets to short. Yeah, he, Neil was all over that like for oh. a year, for like over a year, a couple of years. Yeah, we were barcoding for quite some time here. This is like, you know, there's, there's flat channels and then there's barcoding, and this is a flat channel barcode, I would say. We kind of moved to the upside. Um, not, not, this is, this is a really barcodey one. The volume isn't even that bad either. We have volume over a mil. It's about 1.8 mil. Let's look at the, um, the daily on Sundial. Oh God. I mean, the daily what? is, 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 it's so, yeah, very much like we were kind of in a flat channel, kind of moved up, moved back down. Yeah, there's, this is, this is one really likes this. It's clinging to this $1.04 area for dear life. Um, I think this is a really Look interesting area. Look at what JV wrote. This chat, come on, bro. I love this. <laughs> Seems 420 hit early bro. today. Let's be blunt. Jay Lee, you win, bro. That was win, amazing. I, I couldn't even. <laughs> right, I have nothing else to say. This is amazing. But yeah, no, I mean, Sundial, um, if we go back to kind of look at other levels, we, I would say, yeah, we, we, we had a bit of an upward channel starting kind of this June 2023. Moved up. Highest we got was um, $2.20 at least then. But I think what's interesting, too, is like 
we had all these wicks. Like, the, these candles were not closing very high. Like, we moved to the high side, but I think we were seeing a lot more wicks as well. Let me zoom out even further. Yeah, the longer term on Sundial, this is, yeah, this Sundial is, this is a, it's not doing too well here. I will say as well, um, I do like this one three one four bottom is an interesting kind of bottom area to keep in mind here. For Sundial, that seems to be where we have quite a lot of support, um, this 130, 140 area. So I would keep that just kind of in mind for the longer term for Sundial. Right now, though, good look for Sundial, S-N-D-L. Uh, guys, I want to mention to you that MSOS is not the only weed ETF. There is MSOX, which is, uh, I believe, a two times levered uh, fund. Yeah, so this one is up big, 12.14% now. Uh, Fabian, if you're able to, 15%. Well, now it's just moving around, uh, making me look silly here because <laughs> every time I call it out, it changes. But yeah, this one's up 10.5% at the moment, while MSOS is halted and only up 4.14%. So if you're looking for a little bit more action with respect to the, this weed catalyst here, MSOX on the Amex exchange is a two times levered uh, ETF for the uh, for the weed. Um, <laughs> let's see what the components are for this bad boy here, MSOX. Where is my uh, component part? Eek, um, holdings, that's what it is, holdings. All right, so what is in this bad boy? So, are you kidding me? It's, top, it's second highest holding is 54% of this fund is US dollars cash. What am I trading it for? <laughs> and what the hell does it have to do with weed? This is Actually? hilarious. Yeah, the top, it's, it's second largest holding, which accounts for 54% 54, 54 of the fund's uh, holdings is US dollars cash. All right, whatever. Anyway, it's moving. Ooh. That's all we really need to know. Up 12%, be careful. Um, MS. OS still halted at that um, seven dollar and four cent area, so we'll have to wait and see. Tilray, there, that's a double levered. Yeah, that's what I'll say. MSOS is a regular. MSOX is double. Um, Tilray coming off a little bit here, guys. Got into that two dollar and forty three cent area. Now right back into two dollars and thirty cents. This was well over seven percent. Now kind of giving a little bit back here as people digest the information and uh, maybe take some profits. Who knows? But we still in focus. We'll keep talk. We'll keep talking about this. The more information we get, but sadly nothing coming in on my blotter quite yet. There's the Brendo. Um, all right, so let me pull that up, and I will send, I'll show that to you guys as soon as I can. Adara, take over for a sec. Yes, I will. Um, I pulled up this ABVC here, seeing some mentions of it in the chat, and also this one um, was a small cap runner earlier today as well. Um, I think not doing too much now, though. I have to say, like we had this um, really nice move to the in the pre-market start 7:30. Um, we moved from 130 to, to 250 plus. So this would be a dollar club winner for you if you were there right, bright and early at 7.30 for ABVC. Shout out to Sean and the dollar club. What was the news on this guy? Okay, so um, the company that's a subsidiary. Oh, <laughs> I love how that. his head pops in and he's smoking a joint. <laughs> yeah, Sean. Go I love all the, the Sean specific <laughs> buttons. They're such a fun time. There's a lot. But yeah, so... Um, Trading after the company and its subsidiary received a milestone payment of 46 million shares from <laughs> A at at bit. I cannot read this name. I feel like AIBTL Biopharma under a global licensing payment. So yeah, I think that that is definitely um, an interesting one. Right now though, AB um, ABVC seems to just be really hugging this um, this range of. 189 to about two dollars so not not too much happening here with abvc i have to say but you know former runner from earlier today i think this one has ran in the past as well let's look at the daily chart on ab to the v to the c um <laughs> but yeah no i i mean yeah like this one we, we you know not the first time we've run really interesting too if we want to talk about levels here which, mm. which i would like to because i like talking about levels this um this 192 area has been we had we closed here on um, November 22nd, then we came back here again. This is definitely an interesting area. Um, yeah, not the first time ABVC is run. Not a bad look if it can kind of hold this area, but I would say in terms of like a bottom, uh, it seems to have a lot of support around this 110 area for this, um, this little small cap over here, this A. 
BBC. Yeah, not, not a bad look over here as well. Um, Disney Breakout is um, being said by Mark Susi. So let's look at, I was looking at Disney earlier today too with regards to the um, Nelson Peltz win and the offensive um, going on there from, or I guess the defensive going on from Disney and some of its allies. Yeah, oh my God, mm. Disney. Disney, killing it. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, I was saying, like, I was like, oh, maybe it'll go back to that 91 area of, like, mm -hmm. you know, where support becomes resistant. No, it was like, 91 who? 9150. Mm. So, yeah, really good look here on um, on Disney, I have to say. Breaking out to the upside, the House of Mouse, doing very well House here. House of Mouse. All right, yeah. Brendo sending me this. This comes to us vis-a-vis -vis Punchbowl News. DEA tell, tells... House of Representative Lawmakers Marijuana Review is ongoing. This, the, the review that they're talking about is the classification recategorization that was suggested to them by the Department of Health and Human Services late last year to remove it from a Schedule 1 drug and to reduce it to Schedule 3. This is what they're talking about when they're saying the review is ongoing. So could just want to confirm that with you. The other thing I want to mention, MSOS unhalted up 2.81% at $6.97. So be, uh, be on the lookout for that in case you don't want to trade the double levered name. Also, the Katina man is still holding his Mara short. For those who were asking me earlier in the chat, 2375. He's basically got the one of the top wicks because I was long that earlier in 2375 was definitely a resistance level. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, he's got uh, he's got the top on that bad boy 2375 coming back down, guys, into that $23 area, breaking that lower high trend that we were talking about earlier on MARA. Uh, because well, look what it did. Well, not really. I mean. Kind of, I'd say the $23 break probably would be the break of the, the higher lows because look at this trough over here is what I'm talking about that basically bottoms out at 23. And it's also the support level from yesterday's close happens to be that $22.94 area. So awfully close to that whole dollar level of 23. Mar coming back down though, wasn't able to take out that 23 and three quarters, the level that we had been talking about essentially uh, since we got on the midday. So, and there you go, MSOS, uh, the halt. Let me show you the one minute on this bad boy. Uh, let's put in the ticker so everyone can follow along. MSOS, I have to keep removing caps lock to talk to people in the chat so they don't think I'm yelling at them. <laughs> but then when I come to put in the tickers, I have to press caps lock again. So yeah, it's a struggle. Thing. All right, here it is. Um, it was about a 10 minute halt here, guys, on MSOS, rocketed up into 718 then it's trending back down putting in lower highs right now below seven bucks around 695 still up two percent you know i would say it's not much of a headline but the algos clearly use this to their advantage and popped it up because it's nothing that we haven't already known which is that they were gonna do a review of the classification or the reclassification i should say so nothing new and they haven't decided whether it's going to be a uh, schedule one look I think that, you know, basically the lawmakers are already getting around the whole classification of Schedule 1 and Schedule 3. There was uh, the new type of Safe Banking Act, not the actual Safe Banking Act itself. There was a new version of that, which allows these interstate operators to bank without the bank having to say to them, no, look, we can't let you... Uh, bank at our institution because technically it's still illegal federally. That kind of gets around that whole thing because the problem was there was so much money being dealt in cash and that you know presents all sorts of tax, tax evasion opportunities, also allows uh, organized crime to get in. Uh, so they want to get rid of all that and they wanted people to bank so that they could track their money essentially. Um, and that was the whole point of the new uh, Safe Banking Act. I forget the name of it though, uh, which allows these interstate weed operators to bank safely with whatever financial institution that they choose. So I would say to you, the real, the real catalyst here is gonna be federal legalization. Nothing short of that really is gonna make this one skyrocket, but what do I know? Um, ooh, it's Handy Randy on the ones and twos giving the Chilean nightmare a bit of a break. Um, not much uh, for me to, to say here, Adara, other than uh, I was looking for a short on Apple when we rejected 16.6 on the future, but that didn't end up happening because Apple is holding view up. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I also was looking at Apple. I'll pull up Apple for a moment here. Yeah. 
I was looking at Apple for um, this kind of break of this one 183 to the downside. Do you know what I mean? That was where I was interested in Apple. Like I said, right. I thought we were going to maybe flat bottom breakish. Yeah, a bit of a double um, bottom there too. Yeah, yeah, right. But then ended up double bottoming, and that's why you know, as you were saying, and as you were saying, Greg said like. Um, and participate, don't anticipate. You know, let wait for the market to tell you what it wants you to do. And that, with that in mind, um, the Eli Lilly chart told me to go long Lilly one more time. Dude. Oh, yay. Go, Randy. The, the Chilean nightmare. There he is. There's my man right there on the ones and yay. twos, killing it. As Shout, usual. Out Shout out to Randy. Randy Always dude. awesome. Always on the ball, killing it. And I love how, like, okay, so we had um, a FedEx truck <laughs> d deliver a package here. And Randy noticed that it was an EV. It was actually a full EV truck. So true to Randy form, he did all his homework on it, found out who makes it, how much they're making, wh who, which companies they're delivering it to, who's backing up. The, this company, it's connected to GM. The man did all his homework, and then I got all that information for free because uh, he is handy Randy, baby. I love that. He knows all the EVs. Like, the EV oh, knowledge is, is, is flexing. The Bright Drop. Yeah, but you did your homework on it, and now we know about it. It's called Bright Drop, by the way, and it's backed up. Come on tomorrow. Absolutely, yeah. Randy's always, always available. Okay, that's it. Randy's going to be on tomorrow. Yay! Okay. Oh. oh, wow. I love that. There's like that infinity mirror thing again. I love it. That was so cool. Do it again, Fabian. There he is. Look at it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Having a great time, guys. Yeah. Um, so tell us about the FedEx EV. That's it, Paul. That's all I've got to say about that. It's called Bright Drop. And they make, uh, they make more of them than Rivian was able to make of the Amazon delivery vans. That's number one. Number two, they're bracked up by General Motors. And it's not just FedEx they're selling to. They're selling to a bunch. But I don't want to ruin it. Randy will be on tomorrow. He'll be talking up a storm. So make sure to uh, tune in tomorrow for another special edition of Randy's Rants. Ranty. Yeah. You have it, folks. Okay. All right, 10 minutes left Sorry. on the show. Adara, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, I got into this Eli Lilly trade. Uh, very few shares. I saw the 614 holding. I was like, you know what? Like, I, I don't trade after the midday anyway. So I was like, it, the trade will be as long as, um, you know, I'm here for the rest of this midday. So 10 minutes. If we break below the 614.30 decisively, I am, or 613.40 decisively, I'm out. Right now, it's going well. Profit taking around 615 because, like I said, I don't like to, you know, overstay my welcome in these trades. Um, I just wanted to take one last trade um, because, you know, it looked good. I, I, but by that, I mean, the chart looked good. And I was like, I may as well kind of get involved in this while I have the opportunity. I don't want to, like, go just sitting, like, twiddling my thumbs if I see an opportunity right there. You know what I mean? I think my issue earlier today is I kept kind of trying to chase trades. And this trade just, you know, sat on my doorstep. And I was like, I will take it. Oh. Also, shout out to um, Be With Rhymes with AMC. Someone make Randy and Ranty Randy t-shirt. I like it. I think that'd be very fun. Yeah, also, Diamond Realty of Miami, 305, saying uh, Randy's Elon's advisor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's definitely the EV king around these parts, yeah, let me yeah, tell you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, although, sh I love Sharif's rant earlier about BYD and, and Oh, my Tesla. God. That it was, was a... just so misleading, making yeah. BYD look like they overtook Tesla. They didn't. They're about 250,000 cars short of that number. So, no, not yet. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, in case you were just joining us today, Michael Moss was on at 1130. We talked a lot about swing trading and how he gets his ideas uh, and finds his swing trades. It's a proprietary scanner built into the Trade Ideas platform. If you are not a Trade Ideas member, there is your opportunity right there. Trader TV 20 gets you 20% off. Visit the website tradeideas.com or scan that barcode on your screen. And here it is. For those of you who are already members, this is how you pull it up. You hit new on the Ideas Pro bar over here. So this is the default bar that you get. You're going to hit new. You're going to go to docked channel bar. It pops up an empty screen over here. On the left, you're going to see a whole bunch of different pre-made scanners. Look at this. Pre-market, after hours, stock racing, anchored, VWAP. Shout out to Brian Shannon. Is that a picture of Brian Shannon right there? No, that's not him. <laughs> All right, anchored VWAP. We hear a lot about that. Uh, well, he was on the show with you yesterday, wasn't he? The, Brian Shannon? 
Yeah, he was. He was with the Katina man yesterday. Every Tuesday he's on. So any Brian Shannon fans, make sure to check out the Katina Man's Market Recap Show on Tuesday. But here it is, swing picks. That's what the NOS boss was telling us to click. You click that swing trick, uh, swing picks uh, option, and there you go. You get the whole thing loaded up. All your TI strength, technical indicator strength uh, down here. It lists them in order of priority. You click on this bad boy, and then you get the charts over here so you can have a look and see what Michael's looking at. Michael also uses the gap scanner, and specifically what he's looking for on the gap scanner, he wants to see if there is sector confluence. Are there several stocks from similar sectors or similar, similar industries that are all gapping up today? And if there is, there's typically a macroeconomic callus for that particular sector, and so that gets him interested, and he starts narrowing down those stocks for whichever one he likes the best. So multiple ways that Michael Noss uses to find his trade ideas for swing trades. In case you missed it earlier on, go back to the 11.30 uh, time slot on the show and have a watch while he was on. I think he was on for about 20 or 25 minutes. But this is what he does. Shout out to him for coming on. We couldn't thank him enough, Adara, and for uh, teaching us essentially how to uh, find swing trades. Yeah, I think it was a really good learning lesson for me as well because I have, I guess, learning lesson that's so redundant, but a good learning opportunity to learn a lesson about swing picks because I don't, I don't swing trade. You know what I mean? I'm still yep. very new to this world. So I think, <laughs> especially as someone who, whose intraday style is very um, scalpy, it's a lot. You know, it's it's less kind of you know focused than I like. So I think like hearing from someone like Michael Noss, yes, who knows what he's talking about, who you know was really gracious and took the time to chat with us today and learn about his swing picks. You know, really opens my eyes. You know, maybe I'll I'll look kind of more into swing because I think with swing too, what's interesting with intraday, you're just thinking about kind of how much is it going to move today, right? Swing, you have to plan your whole like, you know, your whole life cycle for it, right? Because you don't know how long Honestly. you're going to be in it. Like it's a whole, and I know you you do swings as well, I right? Do. So like, yeah, yeah. Majority. I guess I have a question for you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you find your and I, maybe this is like you know self, but I'm just curious. How do you find your your I guess your watch list kind of and your your stock picking strategy varies for day trades versus swing trades? Oh, 100. percent They're yeah. completely separate. Uh, for for swing trades, I'm liking uh, strong macroeconomic uh, macroeconomic tailwinds. Like for example, um, like for my meta trade last year that we that I, I held for like. I think it was two quarters of almost six months. Meta was absolutely destroyed in 2022 because digital ad sales tanked and um, companies were not spending. And then all of a sudden that shifted. Whereas like, okay, well, we have more money on the balance sheet than we anticipated. Let's spend on digital ad sales. And Meta really benefited from that tailwind. So um, sadly, I've been far less inclined to take swing trades based on a technical basis rather than a fundamental basis. But with Michael Noss kind of showing me exactly kind of what to, to fine tune here, I'll definitely be taking more on a technical basis. But my swings have al almost always been fundamentally based, not technically based. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of unusual for me because I'm not really well versed in fundamental analysis, but I, I get trends and so yeah, we'll see how that's that really cool. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's interesting too because I was gonna say like you're a very technical trader for day trading, right? And I think for day trading, yeah, yeah we talked about interesting how different it is. Yeah, time. yeah. So no, I, I, yeah, I thought that that was kind of interesting. And then also my other question, maybe this varies per person. Mm. How long is this, is considered like a swing trade? Do you know what I mean? Because I know yeah. they really vary for different it's people. It's like three days to three months. Oh, so it's so it's really like free. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's quite. I like that. It really depends on what book you read because I've seen any number of definitions. Yeah. I gotta tell you the truth, right? So there's really no hard and fast one. Jay Lee, please pull up the swing view for Boyle on their website. Would love to see what it shows. So Jay doesn't typically work like that. I'm not pulling up a name and it doesn't analyze the name and say, okay, well, this is a good swing trade candidate. No, 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 this is not a good swing trade candidate. It shows you what ideas are out there. So if Boyle happens to be one of them, it'll show up on the scanner. If it's not, it won't, right? But there's no swing trade analyzer for uh, a specific instrument, if that's what you're asking, Jay. But, you know, I just essentially look at Boyle uh, lately, and it's really been recovering ever since that shellacking that um, Nat Gas took. I don't know how much of that is really due to the, you know, the belligerencies in the Red Sea. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, essentially what, uh, what we're looking for here is, you know, a cold winter. I think that's really the only way that we're going to get prolonged move up on uh, nat gas. I don't think that, uh, you know, it's 
well, who knows how, how much this conflict in the Middle East will go on for. I don't really want to get into that whole thing, but it seems to be a Red Sea-driven catalyst, however long that lasts. Um, any other ideas? Uh, yeah, Icky22MB 20, Icky says commodities are great for swing trades. My understanding is commodities really trend, and when they trend, they trend for prolonged periods. So that's just kind of uh, the basis, a uh, very limited basis of understanding for me on commodity swing trades, but let me know how you do on that. Paul says, I was wondering what the timing was for swing trading. So that's pretty much what I do days to months. Yeah, cool. my understanding is that really, again, comes down to uh, what definition you read, but from a few days to a few months, I don't think that there's really a hard and fast rule. It can be whatever you want it to be. Vinay, Vinay Patel says, Mara, question mark. Tina Man is still short that. You want to have a look at Mara? Yeah, let's look at Mara. Ooh, really also, go down to Eli Lilly, 6'14.75, so 75 cent move. I'm very happy to, to see it. I, this is, I, you know, I'm all, I still have my triangle pulled up because I thought we were maybe going to ascending wedge. Yeah, Sean, congrats to Sean. All, you were right when you said Sean got basically top with here. Did. This is a crazy yeah, 75 move. 75 essentially Woo! was top. Yeah, yeah. This is 75 cent winner here so far. I'm sure it will soon join the illustrious, exclusive, elusive dollar club. <laughs> um, yeah, Sean was there. It is, baby. Sean, there it is. Yeah, I love that animation. And I mean, yeah, it, it looks like it, it, it's knocking on its, it's trying to get an entry. The, hopefully the bouncer will let it into the dollar club. Because yeah, we, we fell really hard off this. This is a triple top. So this 23, um, basically Rashawn got in this 23.75, 23.75, 23.75, reject, reject, reject. Swoop to the downside. Um, yeah, I think this one looks really good in terms of like, I think this 23 area could be an area of interest for profit taking. Just, mm. Again, not advice, just my take on the chart because that's where we had like a little bit of pickup earlier. Then that 2280 area could also be of interest and then a little bit of consolidation around 2230. Again, I, you know, I, I definitely like I, I'm who knows, but that's kind of my take on that. Just looking at the chart here. Lots of people mentioning Fed time. Yeah, I think the Fed FOMC yep. minutes, I love to see yes, how the market reacts to this stuff. It's one of the craziest, I think coolest things about being here and being in the thick of it is seeing how the market reacts to everything, to these big events. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. Also, because we have a couple seconds, let, let me pull up my Go Eli Lilly trade, because why not? So I did, yeah, we got 75 cents off this move. Again, I'm in the sim. But yeah, the Eli Lilly continued to make higher highs. Like I got out for um, 614.75, because you guys know what I'm like. I look at the tape. If I see some resistance in the tape, I make my decision that way. That I did see, I didn't like what we were doing around uh, 614.75, so that's where I got out. But it continued to move to the high side. Now we're, we're hanging out above the 615. Really good look on Eli Lilly. Um, this, this stock is feeling nice and healthy, enjoying some healthy gains, pun intended, um, with its weight loss drugs, with this new um, you know, year. But yeah, I mean, quite the trading day. You had your small cap, you had Mara. Yeah, good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very yeah, not a day. bad day today, definitely. Just um, interesting little comment here from an individual by the name of AK. Says, um, if I hold, oh, does being a bag holder make me a swing trader? No, it makes me a poor risk manager. Well, I don't think that that's what we're saying. What's up, Fabian? Yes, sir. Okay, oh. we got to send it to the yes, big desk. Yes, we Go do. For it. Yep. Um, well, we will see you tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. For now, Brendan is, in fact, at the big desk. All right, uh, meeting minutes from the last Fed meeting are out, guys. So just watch the market again. Fair warning, uh, minutes are out here. Uh, the summary right now, Fed minutes cite diminished inflation risks across the board. Concern about overly restrictive.